we're going to start posting each podcast episode that you see on YouTube a week earlier on Patreon. So feel free to join for early access to all episodes. Plus, we're going to start doing bonus podcast episodes every week. So if you want to join Patreon, it's patreon.com slash concrete videos. Next week's episode is already posted there, so feel free to go check it out. Hello, world. We're back for round two with Florida's favorite credit card scammer, John Boziak. For those of you who haven't already watched the first earth-shattering podcast we did with John, he is a notorious cyber criminal and the most prolific manufacturer of counterfeit credit cards in the international cybercrime industry. Matt Cox actually met him in prison and wrote a book about him called Bent, which is linked below. Lace up your boots, boys and girls. We get into all kinds of crazy conspiracy shit on this one. Please welcome the dark lord of credit card fraud, John Boziak. Boom. John Boziak is back on the Concrete Podcast. What's up, bro? Back. Back again. What are you doing down here in Florida? Back again by popular demand. By popular yeah. demand. By popular yeah, your podcast. Demand. The fans demanded it. I think we're at 325,000 views Woo! as of right Woo! now. On fire. Listen, it, it, as soon as we cut those cameras on the last fucking, that first podcast we did, yeah. I told you it was going to do numbers. Yeah, you did. Like I told you, I was like, this is this one's going to do some fucking numbers for sure. Imagine if you wouldn't have ate 500 milligrams right before we did that. <laughs> yeah. It hampered my uh, my speech a little bit. <laughs> It'll we, do got, it. we got a little halftime. A little halftime smoker right there. A little halftime doink. Oh, oh thank you, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, he brought it. I was going to call and ask, but I was like, I don't want to be like that, dude. You know, I'm like fucking. Yeah. You know, but you obviously you know. Oh yeah, hell okay. yeah. Okay, we're good. We got you taken care of this time. Yeah, and you brought your lady friend with us with you. I did bring my lady friend with me. Do yeah. you want to tell everyone how you guys met? Am I in this right now? No, they, they can't see you. The you're in the you're in the wide shot. That's okay. You can sit. You can sit over there yeah, if you don't want to be in want. the camera. Yeah, but, you know, talk all about no. Yeah. Um. We we she had seen uh, the first podcast. Um. Obviously, uh, it's, everybody's fucking seen the podcast. Um. And uh, she you know started uh I guess apparently um, subscribed to my YouTube channel and wow. started watching my videos and fell in love with me. It was love at first sight. <laughs> yeah, she fell in love first with me, click. and then you know she um. She went ahead and uh, hit me up on social media. We started with, and then opened up a dialogue, and you know we just got to know each other, and you know now we're banging. Hell That's yeah. beautiful, man. It is beautiful. I'm I'm touched by that. Cheers. Thank you, Danny. Listen, this is all we owe this all to him. You can thank me later. Just invite me to the wedding. Liquid death. Oh, for sure. Hell yeah! Our first uh, legit sponsor, Liquid Death, a water sponsor. We're moving up. <laughs> I like the ice, dude. Is that credit card new? That iced yeah. out credit card? Yeah, the, I got the Visa. I got the the Chase card. Nice. Hold, hold, hold it up a little bit higher so people can see it. Damn. Yeah, you know, I got to have, have the credit card. That's pretty <laughs> sick, <laughs> man. Super fire. The, the Platinum Chase card. Yes, sir. So what's up? What's up with your life, man? What have you been doing oh, ever since we did the podcast? Man, Every time, it's dude. been it's been what? It's been like six months since you came. Uh, I think what did we do it in December, November, December, something like that. Is that what it was? Yeah, maybe even I don't know. No, it was September. way before that. It yeah, was way I think it was. I think yeah. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, dude, that whole thing. Get, get a little bit closer to the mic. That whole thing is um, it's launched my life into a whole fucking different direction, man. Like like when I came here and did this first podcast, I didn't have a YouTube channel. You know what I mean? I had 200 followers on fucking Instagram. I didn't have a YouTube channel. I was, you know what I mean? I was just tattooing. You know, like I wasn't really doing shit. Like I wasn't promoting myself. I wasn't promoting the book really. The book was just kind of doing its thing. And I did this podcast and it was like overnight, overnight craziness. You know what I mean? Like I've done probably 15 or 20 podcasts since this one. Because people see the numbers that this one does, and they want me to come on theirs because they think it's gonna, you know what I mean. So they all mm. want to ride that wave, mm. um, you know. So I, you know, I did this, and then I've done like, everybody's. People were flying me out to Dallas, you know what I mean. I'm doing MSCS and in, in up in no down in uh, West Palm Beach. I do that like once a month now. Um, I launched my own YouTube channel. I've got about 50 or so uh, videos already up uh, on my YouTube channel. I went and got a. I went and built a, a, stu a studio in downtown Phoenix. Like, I went and rented, like, a legitimate office, and 
I got the professional lighting, the mics, the fucking, you know what I mean? The good cameras. I'm running a, a Sony Alpha 6400s. I got, you know, a couple of Hell those. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so I'm me. I'm rocking and rolling, man. You know, like this whole thing is just absolutely. Lit the fire. It's, it's insane, dude. I'm, now I'm addicted. You That's know what great. I mean? I'm addicted. It's amazing what it's done for Matt Cox, too. He really took yeah. that opportunity and ran with it. Ran with it. Every time I talk to Matt Cox on the phone, he's traveling to some different state, some different yeah. country. doing. Yeah. He yeah. just did a commercial for some fucking home security company. Yeah. Yeah, he's crushing. He's everywhere. Yeah. Matt Cox is doing a big. Di- what did you guys? I'm just trying. Do to, I'm trying to do what he's doing, and I'm. I'm kind of. I mean, he. He. He got the big ones. He got like the Vlad, and he got fucking Valuetainment. You know what I mean? He was on like the real big ones. Yeah. You know. Now I'm knocking out all the little guys before I can get up to the big guys. Yeah, you'll get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, I did. I just did the Marty Ray project. What's that? Uh, he's. It's a podcast. He's a dude. A guy out of Nashville. He's got like uh six hundred thousand subscribers or something like that on his channel. He's uh, he's a musician, uh, and he does a podcast. Um, you know, I did just recently did that. I just recently did Back Lovers uh, podcast. Um, I did Tap N. I flew out to Dallas and did Tap N. I did. What other ones did I do? I so many. Like yeah. I, I get, and then like all the opportunities now that are coming up. Like I do, I wake up to a hundred DMs on fucking Instagram every single God day, damn. every day. It's just insane, you know. And then you got all the idiots that you know because they seen the podcast. They oh, teach me how to do the fucking, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Teach yeah. me how to. You know, I I made a whole video on that. That's just fucking absolutely bananas. Have you taught anybody how to do credit card? Bro? No. <laughs> well, listen, I'm charging. I was charging a thousand dollars a consultation. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if you want to talk to me, you want access to me. Yeah. If you feel like I have some information that's going to make you millions of dollars, then you're going to pay for it. So I was charging a thousand dollars a consultation. Now I'm charging five. Hell yeah. Five thousand. Five thousand. If you want, if you want to talk to me, if you want, if you want my time. Wow. Now my time it went up because now honestly, I barely get any sleep, dude. I, I t- I'm still tattooing at the t- at the shop eight ten hours a day, and then I go straight from the shop to the studio and I record YouTube till one or two o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? And I do that every day. And then I fly, and then I'm flying, I'm doing podcasts in different cities, and then, you know, I got all these other shit I'm working on, and, you know, I got the bigger projects. And it's like, I barely even sleep, so now my time is valuable. Hell yeah. I mean, before I had time to blow, I had time to burn, you know what I mean? Now yeah. I'm fucking, you got to fucking pay me my money. How, my, how many $1,000 consultations have you done? Quite a few. Really? Uh, yeah, quite a few. Wow. Yeah. That's fucking insane. Yeah. Quite a few. <laughs> Listen, I got guys oh flying out to. How do they get I got guys you? wanting to fly out to from other cities to come sit down and have lunch with me. How do these people get a hold of you if they want to get a consultation? I, they all DM me on Instagram, mm. you know, and then we just go from there. Wow, what a fucking business! Yeah, it's pretty wild. That's pretty amazing. So you're still tattooing? <clears throat> I am. Yeah, you know, it's I love doing it, and uh, I make really good money doing it. So. Why, yeah. why stop? Mm-hmm. Are you going to stay living in Arizona? You like it there? Uh, I think eventually I'm going to make my way back to Florida. Mm. So, yeah, but no, I like Arizona. It's 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 nice. And, um, you know, the cost of living's low, but, dude, those summers are fucking brutal. Mm-hmm. We're talking 120 degrees, 125 degrees, you yeah. know, for, for four or five months out of the year, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it's, it's just brutal, man. It's brutal. So I don't yeah. know if I'm going to stay there, and then, you know, um, I got other things going on, you know, business opportunities, and I'm looking at a lot of things, you know, taxes, and so I don't know. And I'm from here. I am this is my home, and I'm comfortable mm-hmm. here. Yeah. You know, so I'm thinking about coming back. Are you going to go, if you come back, are you going to go back to the East Coast, or are you going to come to this coast? Um, I, I, I like Tampa. South Florida is where I grew up, and that's where I got into shit at. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of, I might kind of just try and avoid it if I yeah. can a little bit. I don't want to go too close. Yeah, I keep, <laughs> it, keep it somewhere up here, maybe Orlando, Tampa, St. Pete, uh, Brandon, mm. uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Clearwater. Yeah. Yeah. Orlando's a great spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you, what were you guys doing in Daytona? Weren't you guys filming some sort of like crazy I was project? in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. I, I was in Jacksonville working on a, a bigger project uh, that I can't really talk about. <laughs> and I don't want to tell us about fucking it. ruin it. <laughs> I can't tell you about what it. That's, can, that's what, the thing. What can you say? What can, um, you, what can you give me on it? Uh, it I filmed, a, I, I, I may or may not have filmed um, a part of, of something that may become a documentary later down the road. And that's really I can. That's really all I can say. Hell yeah. So, so you you uh, they film something that is being pitched to big networks, major networks. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty exciting. All I know and is you, I saw that picture from Matt Cox of you wearing a robe, like smoking a cigar. It was ridiculous. They had me in a mansion, uh, and you know it's just giant fucking gaudy mansion. And but they rented it, out. It was Airbnb. Yeah, they rented out. I was like fucking. 
it was expensive. Um, yeah, you know, maybe in a cigar and a robe coming downstairs, and you yeah, know, yeah. you know, all kinds of different scenes. They listen. I've seen some of the stuff they cut. They made me look way fucking cooler than I am. You know what <laughs> I mean? They made me look like Pablo Escobar or somebody like that. You know, I, I just it, just the cinematography and like the way they capture the light and this the music and the way they're doing everything. It's it's gonna be fucking cool and it's gonna sell. How many days were you there filming? Five days. Five days. Yeah. I filmed every day. And how day. much can they possibly film in five days? I'm sure like many days of it was just B-roll and like cinematic yes. like looks type yeah. stuff. Well, we would basically, we would film during the day. We would just film like, you know, interview shit during the day or, you know, yeah. other things that we were doing like for the story. And then like at night when we would wrap up the day shooting, we'd film like B-roll shit, you know, like cinematic out in the public and public or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. It was really yeah. cool. It's a weird, it's a weird thing how like now big TV networks and production companies that sell shit to TV networks, all they're doing is just scouring the internet for like popular podcasts yeah. to try to find yeah. content. Yeah. Listen, I get, I got uh, approached by two different people from Vice TV trying to fucking do something with me. They wanted, they had some kind of series that they were doing with people who um, did major like crimes when they were younger and then turned their life around or some shit. You probably maybe have seen about a couple episodes. I think they had one with a dude who was like, um, I apparently sold millions of dollars worth of cocaine or something like that in New York when he was a kid, and they had some other dude on there. Um, I don't remember his story, but I think I think that's the the series that they wanted me for, and it's like I can't even I can't do anything with anybody else. Oh, because that company that you shot the pilot with, they got you under some sort yeah. of exclusivity ex exclusivity well, I mean, agreement. It, it, it just wouldn't be right. At the end of the day, it wouldn't be right because I think I, I I think it would hurt me more than it would help. How long did they have you locked up in that agreement for? Um, I do you know we don't uh, I think six months. Six months, that's not yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah. Over a year would not be good. No, because they can't sell it in six. If they can sell it in six months, that's great. But yeah. if it goes longer than that. Then it's gonna sell. Yeah. It's gonna sell right away. It's not even gonna take six months. Have they even started pitching it yet? Uh, I'm not sure where they're at in the pro. You know what? I'm hands off on this thing. Like yeah. I don't call them and like. What's going on? What are you guys doing? You know what yeah, I mean? Like, yeah. I'm just like, dude, you guys do your thing. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to sit back and yeah. call me when it's time to yeah. collect a check. Hit me up when you're ready. You know yeah. what I mean? When it's time for me to fucking make a deposit into my Chase yeah. account, then give me a call. Yeah. You know, other, other, I mean, because I can't control anything. I have no creative say-so in anything right. like that. And it's just like, dude, I got so much other shit going on in my life that I just yeah. I just leave it alone, dude. I let them people just do their fucking thing. And I yeah. think they kind of like that anyway. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a weird thing. What did you think about the whole process of like those guys, like bringing in all those cameras, setting up all that stuff, yeah. and, like Corey, like orchestrating everything to make yeah. it look like some, yeah. it's a lot of fucking work, right? I got, I got to peek behind the curtain, man, you know, and I got to kind of see how the whole machine works, mm -hmm. you know, and that's cool because you watch the behind the scenes shit sometimes, you know what I mean? When you do, yeah. uh, you know, like HBO behind the scenes and all that mm -hmm. shit, but it doesn't, it doesn't do any justice when you're there. You know what I mean? You got mm -hmm. guys running cable, running cables and changing lights around and, you yeah. know, putting up light boxes and, you know, like fucking shit. It's just the whole thing. And then you got the sound guys with the, yeah, it's cool, man. <laughs> it's cool. I can get used to that, man. And then yeah. I'm, I'm the talent. Yeah, right. So I don't have to do no work. Yeah, you're good. You know what I mean? You want a soda? You fucking, you hungry? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just laying back fucking in between scenes, fucking just, you know, taking a nap or whatever, mm -hmm. fucking, you know, and then when they say fucking roll camera, I'm, I'm. Then I got to jump to it, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and that's that's my part I play in it, you know what I mean. So, so how many times Vice actually emailed you and tried to get you to do something? I with had them? two different. Uh, I had one uh, lady reached out who said she was with Vice, but really she was with an independent production company that I think works for Vice. Vice contracted him, yeah. And then actual Vice TV actually, because I ignored her and I just didn't respond to her. Actual Vice TV reached out after that and and contacted me, and you know I was I told him I was like, listen, I for, as of right now I can't. I can't do anything. I can't do any movies or TV. Podcasts are fine as long as I, you know, don't open the can of worms and, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, um, yeah, I can't do any TV or movies or anything for right now. But I was like, in the future, it doesn't mean I can't in the future. I'm just, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm contractually obligated right now. As of right now, I can't. Yeah. I can't do anything. And, you know, like, Vice, you know, I'm sure it'll pay me a couple grand to go wherever and shoot. But it's just like, that's peanuts compared yeah. to what I got the coming. Big, the big yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to fuck this up with, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I know they did something with Matt Cox, but I don't know if I ever saw. It. I don't know if it ever came out. They did, yeah. I think they did. Uh, Matt did something with them. I don't with Vice. Yeah, I never. I don't saw remember it, what though. it was. He said they flew him out and paid him like fucking. Well, I think they shot it like grand. in Tampa, right? I thought he said Miami. Was it Miami? Yeah, yeah. Huh. they flew him down to Miami. Yeah, and some mansion and shit. Yeah. Hmm. And they just interviewed him. They just sat him on a stool and yeah. fucking interviewed him, and, and so that was you, it. So if you did some sort of, if somebody, let's just say, some big company, some big network bought this 
project mm-hmm. that you guys shot. Mm-hmm. What would it be like? Would it be like a serialized documentary? Would it be just a one shot, like two hour and, film? And see, that's the thing that right now we just don't know. You don't know what the format will be. Yeah, because it's like, say they take it to FX. FX might want to make it into a series. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or say they take it to Hulu and Hulu just wants to shoot it as a doc. Right. You know what I mean? Which yeah. it's cool because that doc could lead to a series. Or could lead to a feature length film. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Or they could take it to like, you know, try to attach like a big name to it and take it to like a like a big production company and they could be like, fucking, let's just run with this thing and make it a feature film. Right. You know, so all like all that shit's up in the air right now. Which Mm -hmm. is fucking exciting. That that that, that's all this is even an option for me, you know what I mean? Like I think even a more even a a more interesting spin off would just be you selling thousand dollar consultations on instagram <laughs> <laughs> that's a documentary i would love to hear one of those phone calls yeah listen i gotta get my money man if i gotta we did get this my live money. we get people to call in live that would have been amazing <laughs> i gotta get my money you know what i mean at the end of the yeah. day don't you worry though about like if somebody did do some crazy shit and you taught them how to do it that you could get in trouble I've, are you still like in are you are you still on probation no i'm, I'm oh you're nothing. off i'm nothing oh yeah. so you're not locked down like matt nope they killed my paper man they they nice. I, yeah when i went back on violation they gave me nine months and then they just cut me loose and was like dude you're not supervisable apparently that's what the judge told me you're not supervisable in but, a, but a i'm not a way or a bad way I mean, so how did you get so yeah. so for people that but haven't watched the first off, so. people that haven't watched the first podcast yeah give me like a brief synopsis of of the, your whole case and then like the end of it like what happened at the end to where sure. you got to where you are now sure so um 2009 i walked into a ups store and there were two secret service agents waiting on me um the the uh, elderly gentleman who ran the ups store uh, took it upon himself to open one of my packages and find what i was sending out um which he wasn't supposed to do. He was supposed to contact the postmaster general. The postmaster general was, um, uh, you know, has the authority to come and, and open my mail once it's been sealed. So that right there um, got 12 years knocked off my sentence. 12 wow. or 13 years knocked off my sentence. They had to they, they had to get rid of basically everything. Any any of the evidence that they that they got because that's how they, you know what I mean. Because they got it from a, a fraudulent way, basically. You got to throw all of that out, right? Yeah. Whatever yeah. was found from yeah. that process. Gone. Gone. So all the credit cards, gone. All the all the equipment, gone. All the mail fraud. The only thing that could st- actually stick on me was the aggravated identity theft. Because I did have somebody else's driver's license with my picture on it. Mm. So I got the aggravated identity theft, which carries a mandatory 24 months. And that's what I, and, and that's what I eventually ended up getting charged with and sentenced. <sighs> And it took him three years to indict me. So this happened in 2009. I didn't even get picked up until 2012. Right. They, and they indicted you. Where were you? You were somewhere in the Northeast, right? I was in Tampa. Were I was, you, I, was in he, Tampa? I was here in Tampa when I got picked up. I got fucking went to Hillsborough County Jail, and then they shipped me out to St. Pete. And I sat in St. Pete until they could extradite me all the way down to South Carolina to where I could see a judge. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then you went from South Carolina back to Miami, right? Because I'm because I live here, they they wanted to send me to prison in my home state. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. That's why I ended up doing all my time in Ocala, up in uh, in at Coleman, where I subsequently met Matt and you know yeah. wrote the book and everything. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so then I, I you know I served my time. I did my 24 months. I get out, and uh, I'm in halfway house in Miami, and then I um I did my halfway house, did my six months halfway house. But it's like when I got out of prison, I didn't have anything like. All of my shit had somehow ma- va- magically fucking just vanished and disappeared. I had no clothes, no shoes. All my jewelry was gone. Everything was fucking gone. You know, my wife, you know, I, I don't know. She fucking, you know, barely speaks English. It's just like, it's fucking, it's just ridiculous. So, you know, so I'm coming home to shit. I'm getting into a halfway house with shit. I was wearing prison sweatpants, prison fucking Nikes, and that's all I had. I, I didn't have anything else. Yeah. And so I had to get a job. I had to work for six months at, for $9 an hour. And somehow they were taking like 30% of my net income before taxes, the halfway house was. Which I'm like, you know, that's kind of a bummer, but it's, you know, it's better than sitting in prison. Yeah. So, you know, and I get, to, I get to actually go out into the world and fucking, you know what I'm saying? Like work. So that was cool. And I worked for like six months um, at the halfway house and I saved a little bit of money. Um and then I got a like a like a, a a fucking one bedroom. It wasn't even a one bedroom. It was a, a studio apartment in Little Havana. It was on like twentieth and Flagler, right by Miami High School, right in in the neighborhood I fucking grew up in, pretty much. 
And, um, you know, it was like 850 a month, which was like, you know, whatever. But it was like, dude, I didn't have a car. I didn't have no money. I'm mm-hmm. working at a warehouse for like 12, 11 bucks an hour. And I had to, I had to wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I had to walk from 20th and Flagler all the way downtown Miami. I had to catch the very first train that leaves the station in Miami an hour north to Hialeah to catch the very first bus leaving the bus station to go another hour to my warehouse job. And then at the end of the day, I had to do all of that all the way back over again to get home. So I wasn't, I was looking up at four in the morning and I wasn't getting home till 10 o'clock at night. I couldn't do it. Like I just, I did it for like, I got out of halfway house in February and then by June or July, I was fucking over it. I was fucking over it. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just like, and I, I was hanging out with some people that kind of knew what I, all the money I'd made and what I had done. And they had some money that they were willing to invest. And I was like, fuck it. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's fucking gas, gas up for another run. And I was like, dude, I just got out of prison for this shit. But dude, I was just like, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to fucking, the, the, the landlord's going to come in and they're going to find me stinking and fucking swinging from the fucking ceiling in this shithole apartment. And that's going to be my life. And I'm just like, no. So if I have to go back, to, if I have to risk going back to prison to get myself out of the situation, then that's just what I'm going to do, and I don't give a fuck. Yeah, you know what I mean. That was my mindset. Um, shit went south almost immediately. Uh, you know, some shit got sent to my house that wasn't supposed to get sent to my house, and then you know the fucking Miami financial crimes fucking unit was at my apartment, asking me a bunch of questions. You know, shit went fucking south, and I ended up going back on the run. You know, like absconding from on on probation and going back on the run. I took off out to uh, Nebraska because my wife disappeared and she calls me from Nebraska and she's got my son. She wanted me to come out there and help her with my son. And I'm like, well, fuck, I'm on the run right now. She didn't know I was on the run. But like, fuck, all this shit just went down. I'm like, fuck it. I'll go hide out in the cornfields because there isn't shit in Nebraska but corn and cattle. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's it. There's nothing out there. And I was just a perfect fucking place for me to go out there and lay low and kind of, you know, just figure things out. So I go out to Nebraska and that just turned into a fucking absolute shit show. You know, my wife was fucking, you know, she was on drugs and the whole fucking, the whole thing was just fucking bad. It was all bad. So somehow, um, the cops ended up coming to my house cause off of some shit that had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with me. Like somebody broke into somebody's trailer and for some reason they put me in it. You know what I mean? Like they said, I had something to do with it. And like, I, I had nothing to do with any of it. It's just fucking bad luck. So the cops come to my house wanting to ask me questions and of course they're going to run me. You know what I mean? They're going to run me when they get there, and I had a warrant, so they fucking, I went. So I had to go back in front of the judge. You know what I mean? So I then I had to get extradited all the way back out to fucking South Carolina from Nebraska, which took another three and a half months. You know what I mean? Going on Con Air, and then, you know, Oklahoma holding facility, and fucking, you know, back in Atlanta. You were in holding facilities across the country for three months. Yeah. Yeah. No commissary, because you're in the shoe, because you're only going to be there for a week or two or three before they fucking ship you back out again. So you don't get commissary. You know what I mean? They barely fucking feed you, you know, so it was, it was bad, man. So yeah, I get back in front of the judge and, um, she gave me, I, I, by the time I got in front of the fucking judge, I had already done almost nine months. It took me damn near fucking, God, was it really that long? I think it was like six months or something it took me to get, to get back in front of the judge because for whatever reason, it was my luck. I got picked up in like right before Thanksgiving in November and that's the worst time to get trying to get shipped around mm-hmm. the country is between the holidays because, dude, they're not shipping anybody. So you might sit somewhere for a month or two before the next fucking bus rolls out to stick you on a plane to ship you out to Oklahoma. You know what I mean? Before you get designated and all that shit. So I finally get back in front of the fucking judge and she says, um, <laughs> this bitch, I, I think I'm getting out at this point. I'm like, okay, I just did six months on my violation. You know what I mean? Like my violation in the federal system, there's different tiers of violations. You know what I mean? So my 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 violation was a was it like a, was like a one, mm-hmm. and it only carried like a six month guideline for the violation. I just did fucking six months. So in, in my mind, I'm going in front of the judge. I'm like, okay, she's gonna give me six months on on violation, and she's gonna kick probably you know, you know, wave her finger at me and, and yeah. kick me because that's all she can do. This bitch gave me another thirty days to think about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another thirty days. Your release date is thirty days from now. Wow. To sit and think about what you've done, you bad boy. You know what I mean, <laughs> fucking bitch. But then, but th- this was the, the 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 golden lining in all of it. She told me she's like, listen, we've had to extradite you from two different states multiple times. 
She's like, you've absconded on, on your, on your, you absconded uh, from your um, pretrial release before you were even sentenced. You absconded on your federal probation, which you only have three years of. You're not supervisable. But you're not a danger to the public either. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't have any violence in my, in my history. I'm not a, a raper or a fucking stabber or nothing like that. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I'm not going to hurt anybody. So I'm, I really wasn't a risk. So I mean, apparently this is my takeaway from it. She told me I'm not supervisable, but I'm not a threat to the community either. So 30 more days and we're going to go ahead and just kill your paper. And they fucking kicked me out the door with no probation or no fucking nothing, dude. Just a free man. I was like, woohoo! Was you know nice. what I mean? Dude, I was like, fuck yeah. So it, it was kind of good that I violated my probation and went back and did the six months. Because or else I would have been on fucking paper for three more years. How many oh, more yeah. people have you heard have you heard of that that's happened to? Nobody. Nobody, right? Nobody. I've never I've never nobody I've never heard that happen to fucking anybody. No. I know. Because there's tons of people that are locked up for nonviolent shit, selling little bits of weed here and there, whatever whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. Stupid drug charges. Yeah. I fucking you know. She was a she was a cunt, but I guess she was being nice and I maybe I just thought, you know, in my brain I'm like this bitch, but dude, she was just like, Yeah, I mean you know, it's costing the it's costing the United it's costing the government too much money <laughs> yeah. to keep <laughs> to having to come and get down. you and fucking yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Pull, because they gotta every time they come and get me, they have to employ the US Marshals. They can't just send the local sheriff to come find me. It's the US Marshals. So they come in tactical <laughs> gear and the whole fucking nine. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I mean? A lot of money spent it's on it's that. a lot of money, yeah. So there's I'm just costing too much fucking money. <laughs> you're too expensive. Yeah. Do thirty yeah. and get the fuck out of here. That's it, man. <laughs> thirty more days, you're done. You know, because I mean listen, I had no criminal record essentially before i mean i had a very eventful youth don't get me wrong i was in you know youth homes and boys homes but all that shit sealed so as an adult you know i had a few minor run-ins you know maybe some shoplifting in my early 20s or something like that i got picked up for but nothing you know so i had no criminal record like i wasn't mm. yeah that's, nothing violent that's yeah good. that's my that's my uh assessment of it yeah yeah, yeah you got lucky man like very lucky what do you think i mean the process of getting out of prison and going into the halfway house, then being on probation, then them taking a percentage of your money, and they don't make it easy to bounce back. They make it almost impossible. I mean, they, I don't know. They how don't Matt make does it easy it. for you, man. They don't make it easy for you. And if you are, <clears throat> that's why a lot of guys go back, man. Because a lot of guys they get out and they're just not mentally able to deal with getting a job, and you know what I mean. Like they just. Well, not only or that. Or they just don't even want to. They just like they just want to go back to selling drugs or being fucking scumbags or right. whatever. You know what I mean? Like they don't really honestly, I don't feel like they give you the the tools necessary to be successful. For people that genuinely don't have anything or anybody and are coming home to nothing, like no safety net, though I feel like those people that are like in the higher category risk, I think that everybody should be assessed. They should do some kind of like post-release assessment on you. You know what I mean, and, and there should be some kind. There should be programs set up in place for the people that are going to be in the higher risk category when they're getting released. People who don't have like a home to go to or don't have any family. There should be programs in place for those people, but there just isn't. Mm. You know what I mean? They're just like good luck. Not only that, don't violate your fucking parole. You're going yeah. back to prison. Pretty much, that's it. Right, but, but not only that, but the people, how educated and how savvy are the people that are running? the prisons and running the programs that are already in place. Like your probation officer, how much of a fuck does your probation officer really give? Uh, no, mine was cool with me. Like I didn't even, right. He was cool, yeah. but, or, or she was cool or whatever, yeah. but, but how much, how much do they actually care? Right. Are they, are they doing this because that's what they want to do? I, or are yeah. they doing this because sure, there's a few of them that yeah. are, I mean, I, a lot I think of there's a few bleeding hearts that are really in it to try and help people. But then I think, man, you know, a lot of people just get into it because they, I don't know why they would, who, I don't know who, who, what kind of, hmm. what kind of person chooses to be a fucking probation officer or a prison guard or a prison guard. Like it, it takes a certain kind of individual to go into that field. And usually it's not the type of individual that you really want to deal with on a daily basis. I mean, most of the time, those people are just a fucking nightmare to deal with. They're just complete sticklers for the rules. They don't give a fuck. Here's here's the line. If you step on either side of it, you're going back to prison. Mm -hmm. There's no give or take. You know what I mean? And, you know, you, you get, after 20 years of dealing with fucking scumbags coming out of prison. Right, you probably get worn you, out you on get, it. You get worn down to it. Right. And you, you know what I mean? Probably don't have a sympathy anymore. You're, you become people. desensitized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's the problem with the whole criminal justice system. Is it's just, it's just, you know... Everybody's just desensitized, you know, and, and giving people decades in prison isn't a big deal. You know, it's super random, but I just heard that uh, 
who was the guy that was the CEO of Enron who went to prison and he just got out in 2018 <laughs> and now he's already like trying to raise money for some new thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, dig this, know. man. The Wolf of Wall Street, Jordan Belfort. Yeah. That motherfucker's over in Australia with a giant fucking company and he's in their political system. Is he really? I swear to God, man. He lives in Australia? He lives in Australia. He owns a fucking company over there and he's involved in their politics. I bullshit you not. Wow. That, I have fucking, no that fucking blew me straight out of the fucking water, dude. I'm like, are you fucking, this fucking piece of shit is over there in their political system? Whoa, easy. What if he, what if he wants to win his podcast? You can call him a piece of shit. Yeah, you know what, dude? I, you know, my bad, but. What if he wants to fly <laughs> to Australia? Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I just kind of fucking blew me away. I mean, I mean, he's probably a nice guy. Don't get me wrong. I watched the movie and it didn't really seem like he was that nice of a guy. Well, no, he fucked a lot of people over him, but they let him go to Australia and he could clearly operate by a different set of rules over there, right? Yeah, yeah. That's bonkers. Bonkers. Yeah, I don't know. You'd think like people that did those kind of crimes, those, I mean, his crime is arguably a hundred times worse than Matt Cox's crimes. Mine and Matt Cox's yeah. crime put together. Right. Yeah, he was cleaning people out and, and laughing about it. So, I mean, you know. Fuck. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. I way agree. she goes. Way she goes. <laughs> That's the fucking way she goes. That's the way she goes. What is that from? <laughs> Trailer Park Boys. Trailer Park Boys. You watch Trailer Park Boys? Fuck yeah, man. Every fucking episode, every season, every movie, <laughs> everything they everything about. they put out, I'm on it. Man. I've been trying to tell Danny forever he's never watched one I, episode. I was just trying to tell her about it earlier, wasn't I? The, the Trailer Park Boys. I was like, you've really? never seen the Trailer Park I I Fuck, did some man. quote from the Trailer Park Boys, yeah. And she's like, no. That's one nice fucking kitty right there. That's all I know. Yeah. Oh, Bubbles? Oh, yeah. man. What a classic. <laughs> mm. So are you gonna, what are you going to do for the rest of the time you're down here? Uh, are you going to go see Matt? Do yeah, it? I'm going to hang out with Matt and uh, do some painting. He's going he's gonna to give me some tips on the finer points of uh, canvas painting. And I'm actually going to start doing canvas paintings um, on my own and then selling them, uh, well, trying to hawk them to my subscribers. Uh, <laughs> mm, hell yeah. yeah <laughs> which, which honestly I put out a video even like like I was like suggesting that I was going to start doing this and people were like yeah fucking I'll buy them and I'm like alright yeah. they're just going to eat it all up let's man. fucking fuck do it. it and it is you know what I mean it's, it's you fucking you got to start making merch shirts and shit I'm and, already on it man yeah. I've already got like I sat down I'm a graphic designer so I yeah. did I did like 15 or 20 designs already and I'm going to try and fucking pick like the two or three yeah. best of those and really? get, get everything people make the money man get everything printed up yeah merch. I'm going to do a whole merch line. I'm doing everything man I'm yeah. like I've only I've had my YouTube channel for three months dude I'm Almost a thousand subscribers. That's amazing, That's awesome. man. It's growing fast, man. Yeah. It's growing fast. What kind yeah. of stuff do you talk about on your videos? Uh, you know, just life shit, man. You know, like whatever I'm going through, or like maybe I'll be just be thinking about something that day, and I'll just I'll sit down in front of the camera and I'll go on like a 35 minute rant. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. and people people love it, dude. My, they're, I'm getting views. I'm getting. You know what I mean? Like, I saw one video you did. I watched it. I think it was earlier today that you were you started out the video and you said. What the fuck did you say? You were really angry, though. I think I'm going to rough... Oh, no, was I like, I don't fucking owe anything yes, to anybody. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't owe anybody anything. What was that video all about? Pay me my fucking money. No, some little fucking punk on fucking Instagram uh, hitting me up and demanding that I fucking tell him how to do fraud and all this other fucking crazy shit. And Demanding. I'm like, I was like, no, listen. I was like, listen, dude, I just don't have the time. I was like, I was like, listen, he, he didn't want to pay me what I was asking for. You know what I mean? I was like, listen, dude, I just don't have the time to sit down and explain things to people. I was like, listen, I work full time. I tattoo full time. I'm doing YouTube. And he came back. He was like, man, fuck them tattoos. Pull your panties up. He's, I was like, damn. All right, motherfucker. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. And then we're doing all this. Triggered you. We're doing all this. And then he sends me like a voice recording of himself. Like, you know what I mean? Like talking shit to me. Yeah. On Instagram? No. Well, we were doing uh, like on a wicker on this like a separate app or whatever. Mm, yeah, yeah. I played it all on the fucking on my on when okay. I went off. I played oh, fucking. Yeah. I apparently, you didn't watch the whole episode, but I no, played. I oh yeah, I played it. Fucking, I, I read word for word like our whole exchange, and I played his fucking. I put everything out there, like <laughs> fuck this little motherfucker. Can you play it right now? Do you I, have it? It's on my tablet. Oh fuck. Yeah, it's on my tablet. I didn't bring my fucking tablet. I have it on my phone, but yeah, no, it's fucking. Check out the episode. No, right? that's weird. I've come and I've had yeah. people like that. Re like contact me just like just to like hey, talk motherfucker, shit fucker who do you think you are yeah. motherfucker you're gonna demand some shit from me punk mm. bitch you don't know what i do with my day you don't know how fucking structured my life is and everything yeah. that i had to do to get to where i am and yeah. you're just gonna call me up and, and just demand that i tell you some shit yeah you can't let it get go you, fuck though. yourself that's why i that's th that's why i have this outlet yeah, you know what I mean? Out, like, cause right? i feel better like I, i'll get really? down and i'll just go straight the fuck off mm. and then i'll just be like 
As soon as I shut that camera off, dude, it's just it feels like weights have been lifted off my chest, and it's just like it doesn't bother me anymore. Really? Move on from yeah. That, yeah, and it's kind of like therapy for you. And then yeah, and then people like my dude, I have a fucking fan base now. Believe it or not, like it's weird. Even, no, yeah, to I even saw that. say that that I have like a fucking fan base now that people that like, watch everything I do and they comment on every single thing. So like when I put one of these videos out and I'm like feeling like shit or I'm feeling a certain way, <laughs> excuse me, I'm feeling a certain way. Um, these people like are like, oh, no, don't worry about it. Fucking bunch of assholes. You know, like there's so much positivity. Like nobody comes on my on my videos hating or talking shit or anything yeah. like that. It's always I get no thumbs down, all thumbs up. That's awesome. I'll do like 75, 100 comments per video, mm -hmm. three, four hundred views. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like it's all positivity, man. It's yeah. all positivity. Yeah, people just wanting to fucking see me do more and more and more. Yeah. Yeah, I could. I just like I had no idea like people were gonna be this interested yeah, in cool. me and my life and like because I I mean I don't really think that I'm that interesting of a person. Apparently I am. Yeah, you, know? you apparently, definitely are. Apparently people just like this to hear me talk. You know what I mean? And and, and I may I, you know I, whatever it is my personality maybe I have a little bit of charisma or it's the way I break things down and explain things. You know I, yeah. I just I don't I don't know what it is. Yeah. It's, there's something there. Well, people, I think people are attracted to that kind of story. Like people like you that come from the gutter, from the, the ugly corner. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you come up and, and you're able to go through everything you went through. And then there's something also about like scams, people who have committed scams or frauds. It's the zeitgeist of our time right now. It's, it's all things current. Like whatever this little atmosphere we're living in with the fraud and the scam, it's been, um, how do I want to say it's, it's, it's like Hollywood now, like before it was like, just like an underground thing that only like a select few people, like if you were a nerd or you were into fraud, you knew about it. Now it's like motherfuckers who aren't even doing fraud or scams are saying they're scammers and fraudsters. Just, you know what I mean? To be mm -hmm. part, to be part of something. Like, it's so fucking crazy. Like, these kids that reach out to me on Instagram, you should see their Instagrams. Like, like they're taking pictures of all this money and all this shit. And then, like, I'll have a conversation with them, and it immediately I know they don't know shit. Mm. They know absolutely dick. You know what I mean? They're just fucking trying to be cool. Like, it's it's cool to say you're a scammer now. Mm. You know what I mean? All the rappers are talking mm. about it, and then you got this guy, fucking Bandman Kebo, whoever the fuck he is. I haven't watched any of his videos. Everybody's telling me, watch Bandman Kebo, man. Reach out. I'm like, listen, man. Bandman Kebo? Apparently, okay, this is what I know about him. I haven't researched. I've never read anything about him. I've never watched. I've watched clips and heard him talk a little bit, but it's like, apparently he was some rapper, and he got caught up doing check scams for like less than a million dollars. It wasn't even that much money and he went to prison and now he got out and apparently he charges motherfuckers $150 for fucking FaceTimes and he's got the, he's got his own YouTube channel where he tries to teach people about like fraud and fucking like CPNs and all the shit that's going to send people to prison immediately. Mm. Like he's he's like the go-to guy for scams and frauds now in like the hip hop community. You know what I mean? Like he's whatever, man. You know what I mean? Like fucking whatever, dude. Like but that I'm just saying like that's just how absurd all yeah. of this has become. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy on my YouTube channel trying to teach people how to do fraud and the, doing the, the whole credit card thing and all that shit. I just don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I want to be the guy making people, helping people make better decisions. You know what I mean? I want to keep people out of prison. Yeah. How are you going to do that? Well, I mean, I just feel like I have such a vast amount of life experience to draw from that. I mean, I can, I can give good advice. Mm. You know what I mean? And I, I'm a straight shooter. I don't candy coat anything. You know what I mean? I'm quick to tell somebody they're full of shit or, or what you're doing with your life is fucking meaningless and you need to do something else if you want to make changes. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I just keep it real with people. Like, I make videos about, like, being successful and, like, what I feel it takes to be successful. You know what I mean? It starts when you wake up in the morning. You wake up, you fucking eat the same breakfast, you make your bed, you have a plan for the day. You know what I mean? And I just break it all down. Like, this is what you need to do to be successful. You know what I mean? You need to cut all the bullshit people out of your life. You need to quit fucking... You know what I mean? You need to cut all the things out of your life that are fucking causing you any kind of discomfort or harm you know what i mean just, just shit like that you know like my guide to success so i make videos like that Kinda like motivational you know? type stuff exactly that's what i'm on dude just straight motivational like you know what i mean all positivity you know mm -hmm. that's awesome man. yeah For yeah sure yeah do you own bitcoin i do not i i i am not in the crypto game you used to be though right i was yeah in 2010 or 2000 <sighs> i got fried for this Okay, listen, all you little fucking Bitcoin nerds out there, I'm sorry I fucking, listen, I was like, I think when I was telling the story, and like, I, I was on 500 milligrams of edibles, and I'm all excited, and I was like, 
<laughs> I was like, I had Bitcoin in 09, and then somebody in the comments was like, well, Bitcoin didn't come out till 2010 and didn't get a name till 2011. So he, he's probably full of shit about everything else, too. And it's like, dude, fuck you, little fucking nerds, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, dude, yeah, I, that's who, one or two years. You, you know, got like, fried dude, in the comments? Oh, dude, in the comment section, I got yeah, yeah. fucking roasted. Like, and they just didn't let the Bitcoin thing go. Oh, no. Like, there's Our so many. There's are so not many. Full of positivity. No, right yeah. Yours, I, listen, bro. I haven't They're even. I haven't even read the comments under 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 my podcast it's on your guys' every channel. Every video, of I just ours won't. Is like, yeah, yeah, I don't read. I just won't. I don't read. Them. I read them sometimes. Yeah. I read them like the first twenty four yeah. hours. And like Matt like reads that. all of them. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and she reads them. And she's like, no, they're mostly good. I'm like, yeah, but you know, there's some fucking there's, there's some assholes in there. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure there is. Yeah, yeah. So you know. But you know, I was invested in Bitcoin early, man, real super early, you know. And then, like I said, the, when the when the Secret Service confiscated my all my laptops and my hard drives, you know, all my keys to my fucking my wallets and everything were on there. Oh, Fuck. Yeah. Imagine if you still I, had that. I had now. I had I think I had somewhere around twenty one hundred dollars invested in Bitcoin in like oh. two thousand ten or two thousand eleven. What was the price of Bitcoin back then? It was pennies. Or a couple dollars or something like that. God, imagine you'd have what is that millions? Millions. Oh, I would. Oh, I would have time, a half bro. a billion dollars or something like that <laughs> right now. Two hundred fifty, <laughs> yeah. three hundred million dollars. You'd have hundreds of millions. Yeah, for sure. yeah, somewhere like around that right now. And listen, I'm sick about that all the time. <laughs> to the moon, Alice. You can't, even think, Alice. You can't even think about it. I know. It's I know. too crazy. I know, but it's just like it's one of those things. Like, oh, whatever it is, what yeah. it is, dude. <laughs> like, it it doesn't. It won't spending any kind of mental energy no, on that. You can't. Yeah, yeah. So you don't fuck with Bitcoin at all anymore. I'm not into cryptos, man. I just feel like it's too volatile. You know what I mean? And I feel like, you know, crypto is, and, and until I can take crypto to Publix and buy groceries, mm -hmm. or I can take crypto to the Wawa and fill up my goddamn gas tank, or I can pay my rent with it, to me, it, it's not real. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's garbage. Because at the end of the day, you have to change out your Bitcoin for U.S. dollars. Yeah. So the intrinsic value of Bitcoin is tied to the, the, the uh, it pretty much tied to the value of the U.S. dollar which we know fluctuates and which we know has the fed says 2% inflation per year which i think is somewhere like around 5 or 6% you know given the fluctuation of prices for commodities and what have you right you know what i mean so like so say you, so say i have a million dollars in bitcoin i have to get them, i have to cash it out for a million dollars in us cash mm. which we everybody knows that if you know anything about finance cash is a bad investment you nobody sits on cash right cuz it loses its value over time you know what I mean? It loses its purchasing power. You know, you get into fucking, you get into like tangible, and it's you know, uh, uh, silver, gold, real Pokemon estate, Pokemon cards. Oh, what do they call them? NF NFTs. NFTs. Non fungible tokens. I, yes, non fungible That's tokens. That's the new hype. It is, and I've been, I've been, I've been fucking looking into that too, man. Have you? Yeah, like the Jordan Fleer card went up like six thousand percent or something like that. Like two years ago, it was worth like three hundred bucks, and now it's, it just sold for over six hundred thousand dollars. Because of the whole NFT fucking phenomena, yeah. So I've been I've been reading quite a bit about that lately. That's just yeah, fucking yeah. weird, bro. What about the whole short squeeze on the fucking when they when they hit uh, AMC and oh, GameStop yeah. Yeah. and dude, that about, was hilarious. Talk yeah, about con men. Oh, I was loving what it, man. What a con job that was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I think there was some some shit with that, man. Like the fucking hedge funds were like, you know what? They called up fucking Robin Hood. They're like, you need to shut this oh, down. They oh, of definitely course. did. And they and they did right away. That they was did. some Enron type yeah. shit right there. One thousand yeah. percent. You know, and I and I feel like fucking I feel like uh, uh, Robin Hood should be fined for that. Oh, he might be because I mean they, they were obviously inter intervening in the in, in the free market. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Well, and that that was hilarious, dude. Them dudes yeah. lost so much money. All the fat cats were losing because <laughs> mm -hmm. they had to, you had to make they had to fucking cover all their loss. It was hilarious. Dude. You spent like two hundred bucks on it, right? You, yeah, you bought how many? Did you make out? Work. We got some. No, it's no. down right now. A it little is. Bit. Yeah. What yeah, did you? What did you pay? It's climbing right now. Oh, uh, I think we paid around a hundred bucks. So you paid a hundred bucks. GameStop. I think it's around the same. Did you right get in kind of early? For, I thought you bought. I thought you bought in for more than a hundred. We got some for probably like 111. I think it's right around the same right now. We might have bought some even after that. We bought a bunch of different times as it was yeah. going crazy. We just kept buying it. Yeah. What's it at right now? Like 90 bucks? Something it's like at that? like 100 bucks. Is it? Yeah, I haven't been watching it. I was just no, following. Either. Yeah, I was like, that's hilarious. But it was at like 50 last week, hilarious. 40 last week. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, but like I dude, I invest in, in, in I'm like a long-term investor, you know, so I do like blue chip, you know, stocks. I do like Apple, Alphabet. Microsoft, you know what I mean? Companies that I think are going to be around for a long time and that yeah. are less volatile. That's what I invest in. And then, you know, gold and silver and, you know, I invest in those things as well. Like individual stocks, like the individual blue chip stocks like y that? Yes. <clears throat> yeah. No S&P 500, like index funds or? No, I don't do the index funds. No. no. Why not? Uh, I, I just feel like I would have to move my money around a little bit too much. And I kind of just, I like, I like hands-off investing because I got so much other shit going on in my life and it's like, I don't want to pay somebody to, to, 
You know, I don't want to pay somebody to move my money around for me. Well, that's the I want to fucking the index funds are like the hand. That's like the hands off approach because you're putting it across, you know, across all those companies. You're going to spread it right, but then, right. but just like the height of what's going on and like right now with like the economy and like the country and the corona and all the other shit. It's just like mm. so the little bit of money I did have, I pulled out and I'm just like in, investing in sure things right now, like technology and yourself. Mm -hmm. like right now, like when, yeah. when right, at the spot that you're at in your life, it's probably best to just invest in what you're working on, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I think technology um, is going to be the future. And I don't think you're going to lose with technology. No. At all. It doesn't matter how, you know, the state of the union, it doesn't matter how bad things get, you know, uh, technology is going to be our savior, I believe. You know, you think it's going to be our savior oh, yeah. or you think it's going to be our demise? It could go either way. Mm. I've seen Terminator 1 and 2. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I could go either way. I, I really, I genuinely believe that um, artificial intelligence, um, you know, machine learning, uh, machine learning algorithms and, and automation, all that's going to be the future and it's going to change our lives. I think it's Tesla. Yeah, I think I think You're in the next in the next probably two decades you're going to see more change than we have in the past ten thousand years. Yeah, for sure, it's exponential. Yeah, exponential, yeah, 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 mm. yeah. It's going to change. You know, just like I don't know if you're how aware you are, like the IoT network, mm, so like what's the that? like the Internet of Things, and like that whole rollout over the next fucking two decades with the fucking five G and all that. So, so Internet of Things is like. Um, because of the the just how cheap it is to manufacture sensors and all that shit, so like everything's going to be equipped with a sensor that is then um, linked to the internet. So say there'll be a sensor in this fucking in this water can. Yeah. And I'll be able to open an app on my phone and I'll be able to check the pH balance. I'll be able to check the temperature of the water. I'll be able to check when the when it was manufactured if it's already been opened. Like it, so there's going to be so many data points on everything that you're just going to be able. It's going to be all that information is going to be readily available to you. And not only that, all of that information is going to be captured um, in in mass and used to and then further the to the, the, to the, the, the learning algorithms oh. for 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 AI. So, it, dude, it's like this whole, it's, it sounds sci-fi. It sounds like some fucking, you know what I mean? Some Blade Runner shit, but dude, it's, it's all coming. And you know what I mean? All of these, all of these, all of this technology already exists. You know what I mean? It just hasn't been widely incorporated into our infrastructure, into our everyday lives. Like I, I feel like it's going to within the next probably 10 to 20 years. Are you going to get one of those, uh, Tesla sensors in your head? The, uh, the Elon chip. Sign the, me up. What's the Elon chip called? <laughs> oh, it's Neuralink. Uh, Neuralink. Oh, Neuralink. Yeah, wow, Neuralink. Two, version 2.0. <clears throat> yeah. You know what I mean? Let the first one come out and fry a couple of fucking yeah. brains. Let, let somebody learn how to hack them and just pop people's fucking brains real yeah. quick. You know what I yeah. mean? And then I'll get the version 2.0. But yeah, I think they're going yeah. to use the first like rollout of them for people that actually need them medically. Yeah, they're yeah. going to help. They're, they're going to help blind people see. They're yeah. going to help fucking paralyze cool people walk. They're going to yeah. speech impediments. That's all kinds cool of. Fun. Oh, it's going to change our. It's going to change society. Yeah. He said he wants to start taking Bitcoin for his uh, Tesla cars. To Tesla just it bought like uh, one point five billion or something yeah. like that in, yeah. in Bitcoin. They said they want you want he wants to make it where you can buy their cars in Bitcoin. Yep, in Bitcoin. So I mean, you know, he's just trying to further the 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 whole because he sees what's coming. Yeah, and he's privy to he's things that smart. all of us are yeah. not. Yeah, I'm sure mm -hmm. he sits on a few boards and he's got a few phone numbers that he knows about. You know what I mean? Like, so he he sees what's coming before everybody else does. Obviously, so he sees what's coming. And it, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a technocracy, and our future is going to be a technocracy. Yeah, I believe you know it may, it maybe even in future future decades. I mean, we're even going to eliminate p politics is going to be artificial intelligence. You're going to go. Our, our judges are going to be AI, eventually. I mean, now you can see AI doctors. That's kind of scary. A AI fucking therapists. It's it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be awesome. What are you kidding me? It's going to be fucking awesome. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's also going to be pretty terrifying. At the it same is, time. and the government's going to know everything you're doing. You know what I mean? They're going to know where you're at and they're going to you know, more so than they already do now, you know. But I don't care. It's going to listen, I'm going to be able to go to the grocery store. When they put those chips in people and they eliminate all money, there's always going to be a sector of society and like all these fucking these dumb rednecks that storm the capital with the fucking idiot with the viking horns on them. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like what what did you what did you guys think you were what we're going to going to accomplish? Yeah. What do you think you were going to accomplish? So, you know, you've got you're going to have a whole sector of society that thinks like these people do. But guess what? I'm going to be able to go to the grocery store and buy groceries. You're not. I'm going to be able to put gas in my car. You're not. You know what I mean? Joe Biden's going to have a camera in the corner of my bedroom, and I'm going to say thank you. What? You can't fight it. What are you, what are you going to do? You're going to, be, you're going to give up your life for the cause? You can't fight it. These people mm. have drones. They have Predator drones. They have ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles. 
You know what I mean? They could smoke you out of your fucking bed while you're sleeping and you don't even know nothing about it. You can't fight it. So, yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Just fucking embrace it and try and, you know what I mean, make your way through it, dude. That's all mm. you can do. And I'm going to do it with a smile. Mm. Yeah, you just got to do the best that you See, can, I guess. You, yeah, fuck what are you it. Do? Fuck it. You're, Shane's going to fight it. Fuck Shane don't fuck me, with any of this shit. Did he talk you into getting be, the chip? I'm going to be long gone by then. Yeah, no, you're yeah, not, bro. Yeah, dead. I don't 10 know, years? I don't know if, no, if our generation. That ain't 10 years. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's fucking that's 50, decades. 60, 70 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's after you know the first nuclear bombs detonated on U.S. soil and. And you know, by that time, all the people who yeah. are crazy that don't want to do that shit, they're going to be long gone too. Yeah, it's, that's coming. It's going to come slowly over time. And yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think there's going to be some kind of incident in the future that's going to dwarf 9-11, and it's just going to completely change our society. The aliens? Unfortunately. I think, listen, I, oh, I'm yeah. listen. Yeah. the other day, like about a week ago, I live in I live in Phoenix. Out on the early, on morning news, two pilots were flying in from New Mexico into Phoenix. They were just taking a plane. And and you hear they played the 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 because they were communicating with the FAA, FAA tower and he was like, listen, I really hate to say this, but something just flew right over the top of us. Oh yeah, I saw that. I heard that. Yeah, and he was like, I, I really hate to say it, but it was a silver cylindrical fucking disc. He's like, something just and dude, these people that's thirty thousand feet. Drones don't yeah. fly at thirty thousand feet. Yeah, they can't. They just don't and operate. They also that. said there was no sound. Yeah, yeah. Like they didn't mention what kind of propulsion yeah. it was. Like if it was a like a an, a jet or a jet, yeah, you would yeah. hear it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the UFOs weird. don't use jets. It's coming, man. It's coming, dude. Like, listen, these the alien, whoever's observing our society from you know distance from a distance because it's it that's a thing. I'm I'm almost positive. Not that I have proof. Um, listen, they're gonna be like, listen, these little fucking. Hairless monkeys are really fucking getting out of hand over here. We gotta fucking intervene. They're yeah. fucking up. They man. they split the atom. You know what I mean? They're fucking you know, making nuclear explosions. We gotta get down there and intervene. Like something's gonna happen. You know? I just watched this crazy fucking documentary where they were breaking it down. And they were saying like they found a um a Neanderthal baby in a cave, perfectly preserved, and they fucking they took they sequenced the DNA using like a, I don't know if you're familiar with CRISPR. Yeah. So they, they sequenced the DNA, and they were like, there's no way that humans evolved from Neanderthals. There's no way. I mean, right. There's no way. Because in, in the short amount of time that it took for, for us, from Neanderthal to us, it's just a blink of an eye. And it took, you know, if you know, you know about Lucy, right? Yes. The first fucking yep. primate. Yep. So, you know, when they sequenced the, the, the or they, they couldn't because she was a fossil, but... So they're saying, like, the leap from Lucy to Neanderthal was like a million years. Mm. And they say that our DNA is so vastly fucking different from the Neanderthals that it would have taken just the amount of time. To, it does something doesn't make sense. So then they're 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 hinting at fucking you know intervention, Ad, yeah. advanced advanced we can do evolution. It, we can do it with our technology now. Right. Who's to say that a, a, a different civilization from that can get here from a different solar solar system hasn't already accomplished fucking genetic some kind of genetic engineering? It's just. If you have the technology to get here from a different fucking solar system, right, you you've got that. the genetics figured out. Right. You got that part. Of, you got you got that figured out. So it's not really. I know it's insane to think about that, but it's not really that far fetched to imagine something like that happening, given what we know about. Is that what you believe? The human. I have to see more evidence. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, they need to dig up 10 more fucking uh, Neanderthal babies and sequence the fucking DNA. <laughs> you know what I mean? For me, it's just, you know, I, I, I have to see more evidence. I'm not going to take that one study and be like, oh, I'm sold. Yeah. You know, but it's just like. That's like a, it's like a holy grail type question though, right? Like The missing there, there's link. Like, there's like three questions. Like, are we alone? Where do we go after we die? Yeah. And, and how did where we get Where did we come from? from? Right. Why are we here? Those are, you know, those are some of the things that keep me up at night, believe yeah. it or not. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I probably spend way more time than I should thinking about those types of things. Same. You know? But it's fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? It like, it's fun. fun. Yeah. Like, yeah. I enjoy it. You yeah. know, I get lost for hours sometimes just, like, fucking contemplating, like, all of those things, you know. Mm. It's fun. Yeah, the idea of of some other beings coming down and, like, altering monkey DNA or chimpanzee DNA. It's sci-fi. To, to accelerate the evolution and create... Us, these hairless, a science experiment, big-headed, blimp-headed yeah. beings. Mm, yeah, I mean that's. And then because uh, those Neanderthals, I mean, they have huge, giant bodies and tiny heads, yeah. and, and then we are well, like their their forehead stuck out. 
way bigger. Their jaws were a lot bigger. Their brains were, you know, their whole physiology was just mm-hmm. different than ours. I mean, they're they're homo, you know, they're of the species, but they're not, you know, we're just so much different from them. So much different. So they're trying to figure out what happened. What could happen that could change us in just such a short amount of time? Jesus. Well, <laughs> Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. Because <laughs> um, you know, you know, a- evolution is a product of adaptation. Yeah, you know what I mean. So your in your environment, the environment plays almost a certain role in the direction of a species is going to go as far as their physical attributes. Because right. you know, certain you know uh, uh, things in nature activate certain fucking you know things in our genome that over a certain amount of times uh, uh, allows us to. Uh, a- Exuberate, or I don't know if even that's the word I want to use, but um, display uh, different characteristics. You yeah. know what I mean? Like white people were white because we grew up or we evolved in 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 kind of colder climates where there wasn't so much sun, so our skins didn't, you know, our, our skin tone didn't develop mel- more melanin in it to protect us from the sun. That's why, you know, black people are black because they come from Africa where it's constant sun. So the melanin, it's just the environment changes us physically. Mm. You know what I mean? So there's, there's such a short amount of time that they just don't understand how we got from fucking that to where we are now. Yeah. So quickly. So, I mean, yeah. yeah. So it's like something so, had to have happened. And there's nothing even remotely like us. There's nothing that wears fucking sneakers that can tattoo their bodies, like uh, like do designs the, on their own the, skin. Yeah, so being self-aware to the point so that we are. That wear we, clothes. That, that what, we, other, what other? There's, there's no other even species close to us. that yeah. can even contemplate the things that we can contemplate that I can think about, well, how, where did I come from? Because that, that's a big question. And that question says a lot about the human psyche and just where we are in our state of evolution, yeah. you know, but evolution's done. We killed that with the industrial revolution and everything else because we control our environment now. So that's what I was saying about technology and about AI. The next step of human evolution is going to be electronic. If we're going to be fucking cyborg, we, we already are cyborgs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This, these things are never within an arm's reach away from you. Everybody mm. in this room. You know what I mean? Yeah. I sleep with it under my fucking pillow. It's it, never except, farther than an arm's length away. Except the problem with the technology, the reason it's being innovated like it is, is just to make money. Like, profit. For that's profit. the only reason. That's like the, the, only, main... the only reason we keep making new iPhones every year yeah, or, or keep developing new apps, new whatever, yeah. is so yeah. they could just sell more advertising. I, I agree with you 100%. But I think that's the beginning. Because now... It's it's the amount of technology and the things that are readily available to the small sect of people that actually do want to change humanity. Is those tools are now readily available, so now we're gonna start seeing you know giant leaps and bounds in like you know the medical the medical industry with like healthcare and the you know the vaccines that we're gonna all the rolling out and the new medications and all all the shit that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, I believe is going to be a product of that. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to explain to to my girlfriend uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, listen. When you and I get older, it's not going to be people taking care of us. It's going to be robots. Uh. It's going to be robots taking care of the elderly. Because they're already doing it in Japan. Where they got the fucking robot that can scoop fucking the old people out of their bed and fucking take them to the bathroom and fucking... They're already doing it in Japan and China. You know what I mean? So like what? I haven't even seen that. Oh, yeah. You check that out. It's on... Uh, you, ever, you, you heard of the, the Weevolver? W-E-E-V-O-L-V-E-R? No. They're like a, a, a science and tech... Um, channel and dude, yeah, they got all kinds of crazy shit. But yeah, so it's like, well, like when we're elderly, it's gonna be robots taking care of us, which I prefer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't want some little twenty-one-year-old fucking girl with blue hair fucking on her telephone. I'm over here shitting and pissing like I'm fucking choking on my catheter, and she's on fucking Instagram. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need she's that. Yeah. I don't need that. Yeah. I need a cold, calculated fucking robot that's gonna fucking do mm. the do the proper things. You know what I mean? That to make sure that I'm staying alive. You know. So, like I said, man, futures. The future is gonna be if we if we fucking if we make it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we might not fucking make it that yeah, far. Yeah, we might, we might explode destru- the whole fucking thing. Yeah, this fucking game might be over sooner than we think. You know why, what I mean? But why that, do you think it? Why, why do you think what? What would be the downfall? What would be our downfall? Would it be AI first? Or oh would it be man, no, I don't. I don't think we even get. If we don't destroy ourselves control. by time AI, AI comes along, I think we'll be all right. But I think it's going to be. I mean, you just look at this past year. Holy fucking shit! Riots from coast to coast, burning down every fucking city. Fucking storming the capital. Fucking the elections. The fucking virus, dude. In one year, the whole world went to shit. In one year, literally, mm-hmm. no, within three months, mm-hmm. between February and fucking mm-hmm. April of last year, the whole entire world went to shit. 
So you can kind of see how frail the, the society that we live in is. All of these structures and these systems put into place that, that give us this false sense of, you know what I mean, like comfort. I mean, just look what happened down in Texas. People were freezing to death in their homes mm-hmm. because they're fucking, because it snowed and their infrastructure couldn't fucking take it. And people were freezing to death in their homes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's the society, there's just a thin veil of, of you know what I mean? Uh, the society that we lived in. And underneath that, it's just fucking pure chaos. And people don't realize that. Mm. You know, so things can go to shit real fast. Think about an EMP, if an EMP goes off or something. Or, uh, God forget, a solar flare. Like the one that happened back in like 19... The one that had, they had, they had a solar flare about 110 years ago, but there was only telegraph, it was only the telegraph then. Fried every telegraph wire from coast to coast. So if that were to happen now, we, we'd be fucking done. The, the whole infrastructure would come to a halt. The trucks would stop moving. Goods would stop moving around the planet. The internet would be off. It, it would be game over. So the people that don't know how to take care of themselves and like grow food on their own property and like all that shit, everybody else is going to die because they're going to be eating each other. It's going to be Mad Max. Which took place in the year 2021, believe it or not. I know. How uh-huh. fucking crazy is that? We're not even <laughs> close to that, bro. I know, I know. Hey, hey 2021 is not over yet, bro. Shit, man. It's early. There's no way we're going to advance that far in one year. No, God no. damn. But, you know, it's just we live in a very, very frail society. And I yeah. think it, it would take maybe one nuclear bomb going off in American City yeah. to fucking shut this whole thing down. Or, or a solar flare. Probably or a better the, chance that happens. You know, what about the next pandemic? What about the fucking, you know... COVID fucking two yeah. you know, that comes a couple years from now. You know what I mean? COVID came out of nowhere. It didn't exist before. And then all of a sudden it just killed fucking, you know what I mean? Everybody in the whole entire world shut down because of it. Come on. So you, you, know, you don't know what's going to happen, man. You know, uh, there could be a million and one things that could take us out. There's a, supposed to be an asteroid to fly by in like a year 2023. It's going to fly by. It's going to come within like 150 miles of the earth. Mm. And then it's supposed to swing back around in 2020, 2032. And they say if it passes through this fucking little window, and so okay, so when it comes when it comes around in twenty twenty six, I believe, if it falls within these two guidelines, when it comes back around, it's gonna hit us. And yeah. that's and that's it, it's it's a fucking what it's a what do they call it a, 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 an alley an, an an extinction level event. It's called yeah 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 I forget the. I, the term. I actually just learned about it recently. I did a podcast with a guy with an astro- a Harvard astronomer. Okay. Who uh, basically him and a lot of his colleagues they dedicate a lot of time to just looking out for these types of asteroids, these kind of like doomsday asteroids. And most they don't even detect until they've already fucking are almost here or they've already passed us. He said that they have like plenty of time and that he said they actually have like multiple ways. The bigger ones. But the smaller ones, like say the size of a school bus that Mm -hmm. will make it through our atmosphere and wipe out a fucking city, those they don't really catch that until they're fucking either here or they fucking... Did you hear about the the recent thing that was found that was noticed by the Harvard astronomer Avi Loeb? They, they found he, he noticed a uh, like a cigar shaped object that was spinning and went past us. Yes, and it was it they was like shiny. Amuamua. Oh, Amuamua. Yeah, yeah. The, the Hawaiians named it because it was found at the Hawaiian Observatory, right? The the, the right. that they have in Hawaii. Yeah, <clears throat> right. Yeah, and they were saying that it may not be. From our, it was interstellar. Well, it's it was from a different, it's, different solar it's system. It's the very first interstellar visitor we've had from a different solar system, and yeah. like said that's that's been observed. Mm-hmm. And then they were saying because it was the, because of the elongated shape of it that it may not be natural. That it well, may that, be like a right that and the fact that the how reflective it was of it light was reflecting so much light yeah. and it was spinning yeah. that they said it was made of some sort of like metallic material, some yeah. sort of like metal. Yeah. Too bad we don't we'd have the technology to fucking. But it's crazy, like all these Harvard astronomers, all these crazy astro- these these people that dedicated their lives to studying the heavens, they don't want to talk about it. I like know. he 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 obviously brought this thing to to public light, and he's getting all this attention. But a lot of his colleagues, they don't like talking about it. They're like, he even says himself, um, one of his colleagues who's a, a lifelong astronomer said he wished this would have never happened or it never would have been found. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Like they man. don't want to think about something extraterrestrial coming through. Yeah, yeah. Our universe. Yeah, and then we just we got the Perseverance rover just hit Mars, just landed on Mars, and we got the first fucking uh, helicopter, the little tiny fucking drone helicopter that we're gonna fly on a different fucking planet for mm-hmm. the very first time, which is fuck. I don't know how much how much you paid attention to the whole the Mars thing that we're doing right now. And oh, I paid close attention to it. Okay, yeah, me too. I've been like following everything and watching all the documentaries, and I watched like live when they fucking. 
they dropped, dropped it down. They shot it and it dropped, and it was it was fucking cool, man. It was really cool. It was super cool. Really fucking that cool. That place is crazy, man. I don't Mars? Know, yeah, Mars. Yeah. I don't know how we could. I mean, it's a trip. What is the. Do you know exactly how they say that humans could survive there? They have to build some sort Habitats. of like. Well, they're, no, they're going to have to do some, something called terraforming. Terraforming, right. Right, where they, uh, you know, take the uh, carbon monoxide out of the uh, atmosphere, turn it into oxygen, and then make an atmosphere. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a whole process. And so they're in gonna theory, they're going to drop these giant machines that are the size of fucking factories at different locations around the planet, and then, you know, clean, kind of scrub the air, and then kind of create an atmosphere. But what they're going to do is I think they want to melt, because there's, there's polar ice caps on There's water on Mars. Liquid water. They've already found that. Mm -hmm. So they think a lot of it lies below the surface of Mars, and then so they, yeah, they melt the water that, you know, through some kind of process creates a, a, an atmosphere. So yeah, we're going to have to go up there and live in, um, you know, habitats. You know what I mean? Like Total Recall. Yeah. That was a fucking good... Have you seen the, the original Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger? It's been a long time. Oh, man, that's such a fucking classic, yeah, dude. Such a classic, man. But, yeah, you know, it's going to be something like that, I think, in the beginning. And then, you know, yeah. So, I mean, it's just like we have to get off Earth. We have to become an interplanetary species or else we're not going to survive mm -hmm. in the long run. Because eventually the Earth's going to get swallowed up by the sun and the sun's going to fucking, you know what I mean, go supernova and, you know, destroy the fucking, the, all, the, all the planets and everything like that. That's an eventuality. That's going to happen. Given, given you know, it's, you know, 100 million, whatever years, but it's like, if you think about the longevity of our species, like we have to get out of the solar system. We have to get off this planet and we have to go figure it out, which we already are. I mean, they find new planets every other day that, you know, could be habitable. The crazy thing is, like, yeah, like it might not be that far off to get people to Mars, but it would suck living on Mars. Oh, yeah. I mean, so fucking it's cold. It's not even habitable, yeah, you know, yeah. and then the temperature swings and the dust storms and the radiation and the fucking the carbon monoxide. But it's like, I feel like we have, this is going to be, we're going to have to do this to get you know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like you got to crawl before you can walk kind of deal. Right, right, you mean? So right. let's go ahead and figure out how to get to a different planet and sustain life in, you know, hostile environment, you know, with the technology that we have. And let's figure that all out. Get a plan down. Get a fucking, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get a system down for that. And then and then we'll make the jump to different fucking solar systems once we uh, yeah. figure out the technology, you know, the vehicle that will get us there. Until we can be able to slingshot through a black hole. That would be insane. Yeah. The, the was it the, the Rosen, the Eisen Rosen? Uh, this, that was actually a theory by um, Albert Einstein, and there was a name for it. It was called the something Rosen Bridge, where it was like the black hole where you can fucking fold space and travel mm. from one point to another. Right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So that was actually a theory by Albert Einstein. Yeah. Well, the center of our galaxy is actually like a giant black hole. I forget the name of it. Yeah, yeah. Something Centauri. I forget what it is called. Alpha like, Centauri. Yeah. Alpha Centauri. Well, no, Alpha Centauri, I think, is the next, the closest... Solar system. Okay, yeah, to us. No, that's not what I'm thinking of. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, if we could figure out a way to travel through black holes, listen, man, to I'm other still contemplating systems. the simulation theory. I think mm. I think all of this is just a fucking joke. You know what I mean? Like this, this is a fucking. We're on a hard drive somewhere, and a fuck. You know what I mean? In some kind of fucking. Uh, 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 Doesn't that conflict? Doesn't the simulation theory conflict with the uh, uh, super advanced? Uh, aliens coming down and accelerating the evolution. It does. Age. There is a, there is a quite a conflict. Yeah. There. So it's like you know, <laughs> pick one. Which one do you want to yeah, go? Which with? one do you want to go? But with, it's like bro. there's evidence for both. And I know that sounds insane, but there's evidence for both. Like there's there's all these major scientists coming out. Like listen, they're like fucking what's his name? Um, the black dude with the afro. Oh, Neil yeah, deGrasse. Yeah. deGrasse. Neil deGrasse. I'm sorry. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Sorry, I didn't mean to. You know, I mean it's like so. Neil deGrasse Tyson came out and was like, listen, there's a fucking a high probability that, you know what I mean, that like, this may all be a simulation. And even Elon Musk comes out like, you know, if, if given the amount of, of technology that we have now on any given time scale and the exponential growth, it's like, why wouldn't we run simulations? Mm -hmm. You know, why wouldn't we in the future run simulations of our past to try and figure out, you know what I mean? So it's like, if we could do it, I know it's a mind fuck. You yeah, know what I mean? That's like, the crazy thing about video it's a, it's games. A, it's, a, it's a thought experiment. Yeah, for you sure. know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. But you know, you're right. Like, like, like NPCs, non-player characters, and video games, like that whole thing, like Vice City and the whole. You know what I mean? Like, yep, yep, yep. You just don't know. Well, have you heard about? Uh, I forget the term for it, but you can basically play Grand Theft Auto, and you can be, and you can talk to people. Like, if you get in a certain vicinity of another player. Oh. On Grand Theft Auto, you can actually talk to them through the, in, mic? Through the mic. I didn't. Know, I, I'm sure they were going to do mm -hmm. that. And it's like I'm saying, it's all coming, man. I'm sure you've seen Ready Player One. Yes, 
I think that's the future, man. Like, yeah. I genuinely believe something along, maybe not to that extent, but I think mm. something along that line is coming within the next probably decade or two. Yeah, the video game thing's freaky. It is freaky, man. It's fucking, it's just getting out of hand now. Mm. <laughs> it's getting out of hand. Yeah. Yeah. But the uh, the scary thing about it, though, is, like, people that go on there and want to be anonymous, just like, uh... A, a boiled down version of like the comment section on YouTube. People who can just go on YouTube and just talk shit without any yeah. kind of repercussions or just yeah. like say the yeah. most fucking vulgar, like yeah. fucked up thing they could possibly think of. Yeah. If you like translate that into video games and then that sort of has some like real life consequence to it. Well, well, you have to sort of like make it to where it has a real life dude, consequence to what it. What was that movie with Bruce Willis? Sixth Sense? No. In Fifth he, Element? No, 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 no. It was called, um, um, we're okay. Everybody, ever nobody. Okay, in the future, that th this is the premise of the movie. Uh, it's in the future, and everybody has a, a synthetic double of themselves. So nobody leaves the house. They just send their synthetic double out into the world, and they they control them through fucking through like virtual reality. So yeah, it's it's what is that movie? Uh, yeah, I think I've seen that. It's before, it's too. fucking it's like, wild. He's like in his apartment. Exactly. He stays in there. Yeah. He's all uh, fucked up and old looking, but his sim, his out, his yeah. out in the world was like fresh shaven. He's, he's a yeah. cop. He's a yeah. cop. And but he sends his sim out into the world, and then like there's this whole thing where it's a game where you can control other people, where other people like you can physically control another person because they got these chips, these implants in them, and do the whole thing is just fucking insane. Absolutely insane. Like I wish Black I could remember. Mirror. You ever see Black Mirror? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. That type of shit. It is, man. Yeah, it was a great movie. Yeah. <laughs> That shit, mm. That's probably what the future is like. I've it's going to be something one. along those lines, man. It's going to be something along those lines of, of virtual reality mixed with augmented reality. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mixed with fucking the Neuralink in our brain. It's going to be some kind of fusion, I think, of those three things. Mm. That's too much. I don't think I want to be here for all that <laughs> shit, man. That's freaky, bro. <laughs> it's wild, man. It's like it's too much. such a mind fuck when, when you think about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so sci-fi. <laughs> Matt Cox told me you're into you're into a lot of conspiracy theories. Is that I true? mean, not all the conspiracy theories. He said you're into all of them, every single every one. Every single one of them. Not not necessarily that I subscribe, and you know, full wholeheartedly believe in all of them. But it's like it's fun, man. Yeah, it's fucking fun at the end of the day to think yeah, that is. you know the Clintons are fucking you know killing children and fucking draining the adrenochrome out of their brains, and there's lizard people that fucking run the government. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. Anunnaki, dude. The whole all of it's fucking fun. You know what I mean? It's yeah. hilarious. What's your favorite conspiracy theory? Oh, man. Uh, dude, it would have to be probably uh, the lizard people. Hmm. The fucking, the reptilians. That's like the most insane one. Dude, that's, that's like some David so Icke shit. Fucking, oh, I love David Icke. Do you really? I love David Icke. I mean, I don't, you know, necessarily believe what he says is gospel. Right. Like, you know, he's a fucking... He, I see he says some shit, I'm just like, all right. Or what about the dude, the ancient alien dudes with the fucking hair? Yeah. It's like, come on, you can't oh, take yeah, that. You that can't that take guy. that guy seriously. You yeah. know what I mean? Fucking get a haircut, bro, and then I might fucking listen to you. Well, that's fucking... just that's just fucking overproduced yeah. entertainment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, but I lo I love the reptilian, the reptilian, uh, the whole fucking that whole thing is fucking pretty cool. I fell down it's that rabbit crazy, hole yeah. on YouTube. You see the like. What they, is the gist they, of the reptilian? That's, that's the one I have not paid attention. So to. there's this uh, race of reptilian people um, that you know quietly pull all of the strings. Uh, in our society, in a what is a reptilian person? Um, it's basically what you like. You would think it would be like a big ass fucking lizard person. They got a weird big ass fucking crocodile they walking got, around. Yeah. yeah, and they got like they got eyes. So they they show like all these videos yeah. of, like people That's on like CNN say. and like you like on on like Congress. Like they'll have like a Bloomberg or something playing where like they're all voting for Congress and they'll zoom up on somebody and all of a sudden their eyes will fucking blink sideways. And they'll have like reptilian pupils and shit. Yeah, it's just fucking. This is the kind of shit you get banned <laughs> off YouTube for talking about. I, I know, dude. <laughs> no, it's all over YouTube. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, no. I, I fell down a rabbit hole and yeah. yeah. I've watched that shit. I, they've before. done yeah, a pretty, pretty good crazy. job of not suggesting these videos anymore yeah. to yeah. people, but if you look for them, you can find Definitely. them. Definitely. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. a whole other conspiracy why the YouTube doesn't want you to see oh, these Oh, dude, kind of listen, dude. I got fried on YouTube. They took one of my videos down and gave me a community guidelines fucking warning. For what video? Dude, I got I caught an upper respiratory infection from wearing fucking masks, and I went to a doctor, and he's like, uh, "Yeah, he's like, a dude, he's like, unfortunately, this is I see this a lot coming in here, you know what I mean? People coming with upper respiratory infections because you know the the the, the masks are trapping all the fucking the moisture in the germs. And were everything you wearing in. one of the the um, surgical masks? Or were no, you I wear the cloth? I wear cloth mask. I don't wear the surgical. That's masks. why, right? Yeah. So I cloth. caught upper respiratory infection. So I made a video about it. I'm like, dude, I'm not wearing no more fucking mask. I'm like, fuck these masks. I'm sick. I got an upper respiratory infection from this shit. I'm over it. And that's all I said. I wasn't telling people not to wear masks. I wasn't advocating for not, you know what I mean? None of that shit. 
they took it down and gave me a fucking warning, dude. I was like, what? No. I was like, no. They gave you a strike? No, no, no. They gave me a warning. Okay. Yeah. They, then they said the next one's going to be a strike. So I'm like, okay. Now I know. I got to leave it all yeah, alone. Not I can't. You that. can't do anything political, you know, unless you're their politics. Mm. You know what I mean? The 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 <laughs> liberal left wing, you know, you know, agenda or whatever. Like if so, if you're any kind of conservative view channel, or you get fucking. That's not true. You get shut down immediately. That's not true. There's shitloads of successful conservative channels. Uh, yeah, but you know, you got to be careful about what you say. Dude, they're trying to cancel everybody. They're canceling. They're trying to cancel cancel Shapiro. They they canceled fucking. Uh, no. How are they trying to cancel Shapiro? I'm telling you, man. Like they they do they do they do shit with the algorithms. You know what I mean? Because they can't outright kick you off. So they they play with the fucking algorithms. And she, yeah. I don't listen. I don't want to get put on some fucking list. I'm trying to get my channel monetized. Okay, yeah. let's fucking. I want to get put on some list here. I listen. I love YouTube. It's yeah, but look, I the think greatest the reason- thing in the world. I you know what I mean. And at the end of the day, it's a private company. Yeah. So they can say and do whatever they want. So I know a lot of people are like, oh, free speech and this, that, and the other. Like, it's a private well, it's company a, that a, you can use, you can choose to use their platform or not. Right. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day. And that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Right. But you so can't if, really. You kind of have no choice. They've become a monopoly. You really don't have a choice. I know. You have a choice. And, and, well, yeah, <laughs> you have a choice, right? Do nothing. Yeah. Or, you fuck or off, use YouTube. Follow our well, rules or fuck a, off. It's a choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then, you know, and then they, and then the whole thing with, um, what was the other app, Parlor? Yeah, 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 and then they went down. Like Google was like, "Nope, you can't use our servers." <clears throat> well, there, there. I mean, there's a lot of big, successful political commentators that made a career during the Trump era. Yes. that are left and right. Like, there's a yes. lot of big, successful, no, I agree. like right wing YouTube channels that are doing. Like, great. Uh, you know about Crystal Ball and? Uh, oh yeah, I, was, I love them. Oh, yeah. I love them. I watched their. I am. I watched their every day. Like, I, I, you yeah. know what I mean? It is a little. I know. I see what they're doing. You know what I mean. Like all the. You know, I see what you're doing, but I get it. And it's like you know. So they, they're successful. Uh, you know, like I said, Shapiro's successful, and there's a couple other guys. What that about are, Candace Owens? You like her? Oh, I love Candace Owens. She's a fucking straight shooter, man. She doesn't give a mm-hmm. fuck. She know. will tell I, you I exactly how it is. Bit, yeah, I don't know. I think she's a little bit uh, fantastical at times. Of course, yeah. You got to play it up a little. Do you bit, see what man. Dave Chappelle said about her? No. <laughs> Would he tweet something? <laughs> no, he did a whole stand up skit. Oh, he about did he? It. I didn't yeah. I fucking didn't catch that one. Yeah. That's hilarious. You gotta watch it. Yeah, it's I'll great. check it out. Yeah. No, I love Candace Owens, man. Um uh what's his name? The other dude, uh, uh the younger the younger black gentleman from um he's all over YouTube. He's got the big truck, the tr- the Trumpkin. He's Trump all, truck? Yeah, he's like pro Trump, super pro Trump, super right wing, fucking conservative. Um, I I don't remember his name. I, I was following him on Instagram, and then Does he I live in Florida. Uh, Probably I mean, sounds like he's it. from the south. He's from the south. I'm not sure if it's Florida. It may Everybody be, it dr- may- down here drives trucks. That I know. say Trump on the back. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you got the billboards and shit out here. Oh, oh yeah. I love it. I'm, I live out west where it's fucking. You know, everybody hates Trump. Uh, and then I come out here and it's so refreshing. Have you ever heard of Forgiato Blow? Of course. We talked about him, of didn't course. we? Of course. I love Forgiato, man. I've been fucking listen. He is a maniac. He had the he had the fucking speedboat out there with fucking Trump fucking with yeah. his oh dude the flag the the ma- he was a fucking maniac. I'm so I am so surprised he didn't get canceled. Cause I think I think they tried to a little bit, but it's like, dude, he's got so much pull. He's wacky, bro. He's wack. I love that guy. I've been I did a little video with him before. I know. I seen mm-hmm. your guys' this whole thing you guys did with him. Yeah, 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 it's cool, man. I've been fucking with him and his music for such a long time, man. So I remember when he's when he was just coming up mm-hmm. in Tampa, yeah. and he was just a young guy, man. He was fucking, you know, a little bit heavier, and he was fucking, yeah. I remember all his old school shit. And I fuck. I haven't with- seen anything about him lately, though. Have you seen anything? No, from him I haven't lately? either. Uh, from just from the Trump shit, the Trump, the boat parade, he was out, like he said, he was out yeah. there on his big yeah. ass boat. Yeah, but since shit, then, and, uh, I think his music's kind of fell wasn't off. Wasn't he a out bit. at the Capitol? Didn't we see I'm a video f- of him probably. out there? Probably. Was he storming the Capitol? He probably <laughs> was. I think he was shooting a music video out there while it was all going oh on. Oh my God, that's sucking. That is classic, I saw it on, like, man. Fools going wild or something. Yeah, you got to love that guy, man. You really got to just give it to him because, you know, I. He, he, Everything that I, everything that I, you know, everybody wants in life. I'm not gonna say I, but everything that people like want in life, he has. You know what I mean? He's got the fucking. Well, he he portrays that. I don't know if he actually, you know, owns them homes and them cars, and you know what I mean, like, because right. I don't know his. I don't like I said. I don't know him, and I don't want to talk shit on him. But like, apparently, <laughs> the story that you know is on the street. Uh, his, his people had money. Yeah, you know what I mean. They, and then they he, owned Auto it, Trader. Yeah, they started Auto. His Trader. grandfather started Auto Trader. Well, there you yeah. go. That explains it. So I, I didn't know about that. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like okay, so. But still, it's like, so I don't know how much street cred, like how much validity it is to like his persona. You know what I mean? Because he kind of came from, but it's like I, people that come from cushy backgrounds can kind of be hardcore. I, gotta, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to talk shit on the dude because mm-hmm. I fuck with him and I fuck with his music. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? He's doing what he wants to do. He's doing what he wants to do. He's living the life he wants to live, and he's Mm -hmm. not afraid to speak his mind. And I, 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 I admire people like that. Well, he's probably one of the few hip hop artists that are like super. He's the only one. Super hard Trump supporters. Him and uh, well, I don't know if Tom McDonald. You know, his you you know who Tom the Canadian rapper. Mm -mm. uh, He's got. He just put out a couple songs that are making major waves right now. One's called Fake Woke. Or he talks, he talks shit on Eminem. He's got one line in it. I think it said uh, uh, something about Eminem was used to be gay bashing and murdering his moms. Now he doesn't want a fan if they were voted for Trump. Like this whole thing about just this whole fake woke fucking. Insist- yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's like, yeah. So he's like Tom McDonald. And he's got a couple other fucking Chris Webby. I'm not, you know, if you're familiar with him. He's like super political about like the whole fucking fake woke culture. Really? And yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's a few rappers, but. Did you see Mr. Potato Heads now non-binary? Mr. Potato Head is now just Potato Head. How far is this going to go? By the way, you still don't have health insurance. <laughs> <laughs> How far is this going to go, man? Tim Dillon tweeted that. It was so fucking funny. I love Tim Dillon, man. Yeah, I am funny. obsessed with Tim Dillon, dude. I watch his fucking podcast faithfully. I fucking, everything that dude does, I love it, man. And Shane hates him. Really? I've never even yeah. seen him. I've never oh. seen, I did not say that. <laughs> oh, man, dude. Tim Dillon. Uh, no, is, I just never Tim, seen he's him. just such a fucking funny motherfucker, dude. And he's yeah. all about, like, the conspiracies. And yeah, shit. he is. He was on. He was he's on, like, like the gay Alex Jones, but funnier. Yeah, he did a podcast with um, with Rogan and, and Alex yeah. Jones. And yeah, then he, yeah, dude, yeah. He, he left L.A. and moved out to fucking Austin. Texas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He has dinner with Alex Jones and fucking Joe Rogan all the time. Yeah, I fucking love Tim Dillon. I was on a club. I go, you know Clubhouse? Are you on Clubhouse? Yep, yeah. He was on there last night. On a, he had a, he started a room on Clubhouse called Woke Hoes Trying to Fuck. <laughs> I, I was in one room he had, uh, Should Women Own Bitcoin? Yeah. yeah. Should women be allowed to own Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah. God, Should, he's so dude, he's such a funny. classic, dude. I was on Bitcoin last night, or uh, today, I actually, I ran a fucking room on fucking- uh, Clubhouse? Uh, I, I'm sorry, yeah, in a Bitcoin. Uh, Clubhouse. I was on Clubhouse. I go on every day. Mm-hmm. And uh, Tyler, you're, you yeah, know, yeah, obviously, yeah. you know Tyler. Tyler's like my guy now. Is he? Oh, he's like, yeah, he's my booking agent now. So Tyler's- he's amazing. Oh, he's, he, he's everybody's I, booking agent. I fucking agent. love hey, Tyler, yeah. man. Tyler is such a great guy. Listen, he will, he will text me all day long. Contact this person. Reach out to this person. This person wants you on their podcast. Uh, reach out to this person. This person. I've already got like three podcasts just from Tyler. <laughs> oh yeah, big ones. And you know, every single day, and like, and then I'll go on Clubhouse, and he'll be on there. Oh yeah. So I'll join a room, and he'll bring me up to speak. Yeah. Every time he's like, hey, "Can you bring my friend John up here?" And then I'll come up, and then all of a sudden, I'll just take over the room. Yeah, he. Because I'll start, I'll thing. start telling my story, mm-hmm. and fucking, and whatever the room was about, it just focuses, it yeah. shifts to me, and everybody's just asking me questions, and I just take over the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, One that's of the amazing. moderators got pissed earlier today she's like can we can we reset the room please oh my god yeah 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 <laughs> and like and like one of my like people i'm working with one of my directors was on there and he was like dude you just took over the room and then and then like some say some bitch came on um can we reset the room please one of the moderators yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like quietly leave <laughs> i'm yeah, out of here you know what yeah. i mean fucking go to another room yeah clubhouse is fucking oh up. i weird. love it yeah, I fucking love it dude What's, i am what do you think so great what do you think the best part about it is dude it's just like it's so authentic because it's in the moment. Mm, yeah. You know what it's I mean? Live. It's just off the cuff conversations and it's live and it's just like, you know, there's just all these ideas <laughs> swimming around and it's like, I get a lot of attention. You know what I mean? When I go on things, and I start talking about my story and shit. You know what I mean? So it's like, for me, it's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because maybe if I was just like a quiet bystander and I was just, even then it would be kind of fun. But dude, you get to listen to all these fucking CEOs and you get access to... You know, people, you would have to wait for something to come out on YouTube or TV, and all of a sudden, they're right here in your pocket, and you can pull them out. And I can go on here, and I can, Tim Dillon's on here, fucking Rogan's on here, uh, Tom Green is fucking hosting rooms every other night, I'm fucking, you know, hanging out with Tom Green, and dude, he, he'll bring me up to talk, he brought everybody up that joined his room, he brought them up to talk, everybody. So everybody could have a chance to fucking bullshit with them and talk with them, dude, I, I love it. I fucking love it. I'm gonna. Ho- I want to host a room. Um, me and Tyler are working together, he's trying to get uh, a couple of moderators that can bring big crowds in. And I'm going to do a room twice a week if I Is can. Is Trump on Clubhouse yet? <laughs> they haven't kicked him off that long. It's only a matter of time before he gets on. Could oh, you yeah. imagine? Oh, man. Oh, dude, God. I tried to get into Tim Dillon's room the other night, and it was full. Really? Yep. It said room is full. What's the maximum amount of people? I don't people? know. I don't know. It's got to be a lot, though. I kept yeah. trying to join it because room was full, and then I, I hit Tyler up because Tyler will ping me every time Tim Dillon does a room or he thinks anytime there's a room that he feels like I should be in, he'll ping me. Yeah. And I'll jump on, and sometimes the room will be full, but then there's like overflow rooms, which I haven't even figured that out yet. So. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Dude, I love fucking love Clubhouse. Mm. I bought an iPhone. 
so that I could go on Clubhouse. What were you, an Android guy? Oh, I've never owned any Apple products. Why? I'm anti-Apple. I've been anti-Apple my entire life. Why? Dude, I don't like the company. I don't like the product. I don't like the operating system. I just don't like it at all. I don't like anything about the fucking... Jesus Christ, you're a rebel. Mm-hmm. Why? <laughs> um, I Listen, I, the, 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 I don't know, man. Just just how they treat their workers and like over there and just like the, their, their... Slave labor is the norm. I don't like the elitism that comes with Apple products. What about Google? All the douchey fucking rich assholes that have the Apple Watch and the and the new iPhone and the earpods and they make sure you see all of it and they got the silly little fucking interchangeable bands that all got a fucking match, you know what I mean? And some girls if you text them and your chat bubble isn't fucking green or whatever the fuck it is with iMessage, do they only do the whole thing's fucking retarded and I didn't want no part of it. What about Facebook? What about Google? What about Amazon? I don't use Facebook. Uh, she, she runs my Facebook. I don't have anything to do with it. You know what I mean? I don't. I, I use Google, obviously. I use Amazon, obviously. But it's like, so when Clubhouse was exclusively only for Apple, I had to fucking. I was like, okay. Yeah. And now that I have the, uh, I got the fucking uh, the twelve Pro Max. Damn, balling! Yeah, you know, you know, these consultations are paying. Yeah, I, I got, the, I, got the, I got the big bad boy. You know, I got to get the best one. If it's gonna be uh, my yeah. first Apple product, it's gonna be the best one. And um. I can't go back. I probably can never go back now. Yeah, I can never go back now. It's yeah. just so such. Pretty awesome. It's just, it is. It, it is. It is cool. Yeah. And you know what? Everything that I didn't like about the I O about iOS, they changed with fourteen with iOS fourteen. You know what I mean? So like a lot of the little fucking just functionality things that I just fucking aggravated me, and I want to slam it on the fucking ground. Yeah. Like somebody would pass me an iPhone and to look something up, and I wouldn't even I, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. Right. But you could take it back, dude. I don't. I don't even want to deal with this. What do you think about? I mean. The iPhone hasn't changed in so long. Do you remember when the iPhone first came out? I do, yeah. Did you ever have, do you have a friend who had one? Yeah, yeah. I had a friend who got the iPhone as soon as it came out, the iPhone 1. And it was just like this, like, for some reason, that moment, I have it, like, seared into my memory of, like, how insane that fucking thing was. It was Bradford. Got it. Oh, yeah. And he had that fucking iPhone. I remember, like, just, like, like, bro, can I, like, play with it for five minutes? Look at it. Like, yeah. look at your texts and all this. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. Nothing has happened like that since then. I know. Nothing has come out that just changed the game so changed much. Everything. Changed everything. And, <clears throat> and that was a decade ago. Yeah. Give or take. Over a decade ago, probably. Uh, when when did the first iPhone come out? You remember? No idea. Austin, you know? Can somebody give that a goog? Yeah, Austin, you should know. <clears throat> it, well, not much by maybe maybe 11 or 12 years 2009 2005 or 7 2007 7 yeah I was fucking that was the year so after f- we graduated high school so yeah. 14 years ago came out that's insane well you graduated 06 06 okay I was 03 okay yeah so I mean in 14 years what the fuck's up why can't tech innovate why, I mean what's up why can't know, we come up with something know. like paradigm shifting like the iPhone again yeah, well, I think it's just, you know, the technology. Matthew Cox. That's Matt, where is <laughs> He didn't want to come on this podcast. He didn't I want to. I believe you didn't show no, up. No, he didn't want to because he's like, no, it's gonna, then he's going to fucking make it about me or whatever. He didn't want to steal like, your thunder. Yeah, he's no, like, his he bo- just, you know, he had paintings to do. He just had paintings. Uh, yeah, 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 I'm yeah, sure yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. yeah so. That's how he's paying his bills nowadays. <laughs> yeah, so. paintings. Yeah, um, which, which he hopefully. Just fucking, I, he just did a fucking Amscot commercial. You know, hopefully these these paintings are going to be a whole new revenue stream for me as well. I've already got people that want like the first one. He's like, I want the first one. One you already fucking, you know, I got people trying to commission shit for me now. So yeah, but yeah, um, bro, I want you to give me a tattoo. Yeah, we can do that. This yeah. next time I come out, um, I'll bring all my stuff with me. You'd be my Hell first yeah. tattoo I ever got. Hell yeah, Boziac. man. You, I put a video up on my channel. I tattooed myself. Yeah. Oh yeah, like I was supposed to have a client come in. And I was gonna film the whole thing yeah. and like, do a time lapse, and yeah. like they bailed on me. Really? And I was like, well, fuck it. So I just fucking tattooed myself and like filmed the whole thing and like did a walkthrough. What, what tattoo was it? What'd you do? Yeah. Oh, you guys want to see it? Yeah. yeah. Oh hell yeah! Like Damn, a pirate skull? Yeah. that's sick. Yeah, yeah tight. Yeah, I filmed the filmed the whole fucking thing, dude, on my YouTube channel. Bro. <laughs> How did you do it? Like, did you have to like? No, I just basically like this. Sat just, there like that. Yeah. So you did it upside down. Yeah, well, you got to start here and work your way. Right, work right. your way down. Yeah. So you obviously like put some sort of like ink on there first, some sort of like temporary thing that you can trace over that you a draw, stencil. You yeah, draw I, a stencil. I use, I use a stencil. It, yeah. I, use, I have a, a machine that, you know, I could like print something out and then run it through a stencil machine oh, okay. and then it creates a stencil and then you put the stencil on and then you fucking, yeah. Yeah. yeah Who so, did the one on your head? Uh, my buddy, uh, uh, Rory Rudy. If you guys want to check him out on Instagram at Rory Rudy. That thing's insane. R O R Y R U D Y. Yeah. He did my entire head, my neck, everything, my hands. see the top of your head. What's the pain level on that? 
Ooh. <laughs> on a scale of one to ten. Honestly, the head wasn't that bad. No? It was the belly. Really? Belly, hands down, was worst. Was the worst fucking agonizing pain I've ever been through in my life. The head, Man, I know that you, you would think that the head yeah. would be just fucking brutal, but it's not. Really? No, the back of the neck was fucking pretty hardcore. I was <sighs> pretty uncomfortable for me. And then, like, down in this ditch down here. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. What so. is that right there? Is that God right there? I have, so I have Thor on one side and I have Odin on the other. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, the head honestly really wasn't that bad. There was this nerve, there's a nerve right here that went down and behind my eye. Yeah. And every time he hit it, like, my eyeball felt like it was going to, yeah, it was like, eh. Whoa. It it was hardcore, man. But, yeah, besides that little spot, it really wasn't, my head wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. Like, onto the forehead, like, out here where these little leaves and shit come out. Yeah. And then, like, the the Tyrannosaurus Rex kind of comes, because I had to match it, so, like, the, the forehead was like, yeah, Why Illuminati? Why did you do the Illuminati? Eye? Um, I know everybody like that's that's like the symbol for yeah. like the Illuminati, but like I I kind of just view it as my the physical representation of my belief system. You know what I mean? Like the third eye and the fucking you know like the whole I uh, call it karma, call it um, law of attraction. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just I believe personally like I'm not I'm an atheist. I don't believe in like the cool creation theory or, you know, God and heaven and hell and the deities and all that shit. I don't believe any of that. You know, mm. I think that's nonsense to me. I believe that there's a, a, some kind of energy that permeates throughout the entire universe and throughout all living things that you can tap into and kind of manifest things. My whole entire life, I manifested all of this into existence. I made all of this happen just through, just through like visualization, you know what I mean? And, and just thinking about it mm. like that's, I owe all of my success in my life to, to that. You know, so that's just my belief system. So I, that's why, that's what that tattoo means to me. That was my physical, that's the representation to me. You know, and I think science is going to prove all of this in the long run. I think through physics and through like particle physics and like, I think it's going to prove it in the long run that, that, you know, like dark matter or whatever they're saying, like, you know what I mean? Like it's all going to eventually be proven. Hmm. That's just my opinion, though, you know, and I'm just some fucking <laughs> asshole from Miami, some crazy fucking, <laughs> some crazy cracker from Miami, you know what I mean? What do I know? Yeah. Yeah. That's wild, man. Yeah, you got to get back to Florida, bro. I, I yeah, I think I'm going to. I'm just trying to figure out, you know, the right the right way to do it because you know I want to still be able to have a YouTube studio. You know what I mean? Not at my fucking house. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like, cause I like I like how I have it now. It's just like set up and it's just like fucking. Mm-hmm. You know, I like go being able to go somewhere and record and then yeah. go home. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <clears throat> if I if I'm able to come down here and do that, then I think um you know I think I'll be happy. So I'm you know we'll see how these other major projects I'm working on kind of unfold for me. Yeah. You know, so, cause it may allow me to, you know, financially do whatever the fuck I want to do. Yeah. You know, so yeah, All I'll right. figure it out. Cool. Let's take a break and smoke this spliff. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> oh man, those two hits got me singing. What are you guys running? Like GH4s or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm learning about cameras and yeah, everything yeah. now. Like I know about you know the SM7B and the fuck. I know about all the cameras and the different lighting and the like. SM7B. What the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know cameras at all. To be honest with you, I don't even know what that is. Are you laughing back there right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. He knows what an SM7B is. What's an SM7B? No, I don't. I don't know anything. It's like a black magic camera or something. You guys are all fucking with me right I don't now. No, I don't know what the fucking SM7B. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm too. Camera guy. Maybe I took too too many hits of that that doink out back. What's an SM7B? I can't tell you what any of these. What are. is this? Oh, this fucking microphone. Yeah. I don't know, bro. I don't keep up with the names of all of these things. What you're talking Dude, about? Dude, this, this is a Shure SM7B. That's the model of the microphone. This is a this yeah. is an industry standard for all podcasts. This is the Rogan podcast. This yeah. is Theo Vaughn podcast. This is fucking your mom's house podcast. This is everybody uses the Shure SM7B. Yeah, they, do. they all use the same one. You should yeah. know, Danny. You bought these things. Yeah, bro. I don't I don't keep track yeah. of the model. Yeah, these number, things are like four hundred dollars a piece, dude. I don't know. I fucking yeah. know how you wouldn't know the model <laughs> number. You know how much like, shit I had to buy to put in this oh, thing? Oh, I, I mean, know. I just lot. I just did it. Yeah. I just finished doing it. No, I know. Fuck, I know all about it. So you got the SM7B. Uh, I dude, I got the fucking. I went with the Rode podcast mics. Um, so not the SM. I didn't go with the SM7B, oh. but I, I'm gonna upgrade. I'm gonna upgrade because I'm, I'm I'm gonna upgrade. I'm definitely all gonna, them thousand dollar consultations. You better be rocking an SM7B, <laughs> John Boziak. I know, I know, I know. I'm listen. I got my training wheels on right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, you know, like, I'm dude. I'm just. I'm so green to all of this. Like before, yeah, I didn't. Sure. I didn't know what an XLR cable was. Well, it's fucking sick that you're like, trying something. You're trying something completely fucking new in a. You're, you're yeah. in a whole new universe. Yeah. Of fucking professional work. Yeah. 
It's yeah. not like being a, you know, a tattoo artist no. or a graphic designer or a credit card scam. No, it's not, dude. This is, you know, you, you, I'm learning that you just have to spend the money and get the right shit and do everything the right way or else the end product, you're not going to be happy with it. And and me being OCD. Well, you got to start. You don't have to do all that shit uh, right away. You well, gotta, you gotta start, in my start mind, doing shit. in my mind, I know, but well, I started with my cell phone in my car. If you watch my, for like my earlier videos that when I first started my channel, I only had my cell phone and I would yeah. just sit in my car yeah. because that's the only place it was quiet. And I would turn on the lights because, and that was the proper lighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was that's where I did all my videos at. Yeah, well, then, this dude I had on the podcast a couple of days ago, I was just telling you about the psychedelic yeah. guy. He 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 shot a whole documentary on his iPhone, uh, at, like a Trump rally or something like that. Got yeah. fucking tons of attention online. Really? I mean, it's like a great documentary. You never would have thought it was shot on an iPhone. Yeah, but he doesn't yeah. care. Yeah, yeah, you know. So I'm like I said, I'm just learning, dude. I yeah. got I'm learning about the cameras. I I I watched probably a week or two worth of YouTube videos every single day about the comparison between the Alpha 6400 Sony or the, and then in my, cause I, I had a, a price what, range. A what worth of YouTube videos? Like a week's worth, like all, every day, all day, like for a week, just for the cameras, just to figure out the camera. That situation. many hours of, yeah, just, of YouTube consumption. I was fucking obsessed, like just to figure out the camera situation. So, you know, yeah, you can go and, down a dark I, hole trying to dude, figure that shit out. Cause I don't know what an aperture is. I didn't know what the oh, fucking ISO, but I didn't God. know any of this shit. You know, I didn't go to school for fucking film. I don't know about yeah, any of this did shit. I. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. You know, so I, I had to learn all of that and I had to watch videos about what an aperture was and about, you know, the, the, the different, how the, 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 what the lens basically does is changes the way the fucking, the how amount wide of light it's open. Yeah. The amount of light it lets in right. and that the overexposure for the shots and all like, I had yeah. to learn all of that. I didn't know any of that. You know, so I, once I learned those things, I was like, okay, well, this is my price range I'm working with. And here's the cameras that I that are in my price. So then I had to mm -hmm. do all the comparisons, break them down. If I was either going to be the Sony Alpha 6400 or the Canon M50 or the Sony uh, uh, Z, uh, ZV-1, which I ended up getting two. I got actually I ended up getting the, the Alpha 6400, but I got the ZV-1 as my main shooter. That center camera is the Alpha 6400. These two yes. are GH4s. Yes. That's the best camera I, yeah, you can I, buy. I know, the Lumix. These, yeah, these are They're like so fucking, cheap. They're like 500 bucks. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I did my research, dude. It was like, I kind of came down to the 6400 uh, yeah. for the wide shots yeah. because, you know. That's you, a wide shot, yeah. Yeah, for the wide shot camera. And then, but I use right now for my up close shots, I'm using uh, the ZV1, which is, it's a camera, it's a point and shoot, but it's it's in the higher price range. It's in like the $1,000 price range. And it was created by Sony as their first camera specifically for YouTubers, mm. for bloggers and people mm. who shoot YouTube videos and shit like that. So it was specifically designed for that yeah. purpose. And I was like, oh, that's fucking... So Perfect. I bought one of those, and that's what I shoot everything on. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I shoot most, uh, most cool. all my content on. Yeah. But, uh, like, I don't even... I don't even... I'm not even editing in Final Cut or anything like that. I'm fucking editing on a Samsung Galaxy Tablet S7, no wow. fucking bullshit, on a free program called InShot. I, I b fucking Sick. bullshit you not. That's how I. That's how I edit everything. That's great. The music, the yeah, fucking. Yeah. That's how I do all my intros. Fucking everything. You know, all the mixing, the fucking. Yeah. You know, so eventually I'm gonna get a Mac. I'm gonna have to, or you know, a gaming PC because I like Windows. And if I'm only yeah. if only editing video on it, what the fuck does it matter? Yeah. I'm not gonna They're spend oh, twenty five hundred dollars on a MacBook. This or, is like a legit gaming PC we have over here, and that thing works great. Yeah, I mean, you, you can. Uh, for, you can edit 4K video without dropping fucking frames mm -hmm. and all that shit on it. If you've got at least fucking, you know, 16 gigabytes of RAM, you know what I mean? Yeah. And a good fucking graphics card. So yeah. it's like, yeah. <clears throat> you know, so I can build one of those with my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've been building computers since I was 10 or 12 years old. You know, so I, I go and build one of those. And then, you know, and then I'll get into Final Cut and then I'll get into fucking editing all, all well, the Well, Final Cut, but he don't use that anymore. People use Premiere What is it now? now? Premiere. Premiere. That's, Premiere. Okay, yeah. that's what it is. Premiere. I think okay. Final Cut went out of business. <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, I don't know. Final Cut was owned by Apple, I think, but they don't make it anymore. Uh, Maybe they do. They make like a more consumer okay. version of so, it. So, like I said, I'm still, I don't even know that side Final of it. Final Cut's now like just a basically boiled down yeah. to an iPhone app. Yeah, okay. I think. Okay. So, yeah, I'm going to, um, that's, I still have to learn the whole editing side, but like I feel like my videos are edited decently. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I do a pretty good job of fucking, of getting everything cut up now. And like since I record and I edit my own videos, like, I know, like, if I'm going to pause or, like, I lose my train of thought, I know to give, a, like, a buffer in between my pause and, like, when I hit pause on the thing. Or, because, like, it's in that pause where you're going to edit at. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to make your cuts at. And if you don't give yourself enough pause, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cut the... It's going to make the, the jump from one fucking cut to the next not kind of a little less seamless. Yeah. You know? So I'm learning all these little tricks and shit. You know, but like it said, it's just, like... I'm obsessed with it, dude. I wake up and I just do this shit all day long, every yeah. day, you know, learning about everything. The light and the lighting's a whole nother 
fucking animal, dude, that I, mm-hmm. I'm just fed. Ab- That's the hardest part. fucking fed That's up with. That's also a really important part. Yeah, I'm fed up with it, dude. Like, every time I move a light, it changes the whole fucking... Then I got to change the ISO back, and then you got to fucking... You get one of those. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you've seen in like my my recent videos on my channel, like the way my I have like a back wall set up. And then yeah, like that's it. that wall, sick. Everybody digs the wall, man, huh? Huh? Everybody digs the wall. I like the wall. I like how that it's came lit from up. right here, it's man. That came from it's right great. here. Where'd you get that wall? Um, so I actually I was watching a lot of YouTube channels like the gamers, and so there's like this whole like subculture of like just videos about gamers and their setups. So yeah, for people listening who don't know what we're talking about, it's like explain them what the wall looks like. Uh, so I have like a faux wall in the back of me. Uh, it's, it's like this crazy found, like 3D yeah, looking I, wall. I have PVC, a uh, three dimensional PVC t- wall tiles that I arranged um, in a you know a certain pattern behind me, and then I got it lit up with uh, uh, LED or RGB floodlights where I can change you know the colors and do whatever I want. Mm. Yeah, and then I got like a one like single stationary leather chair with my you know my nice table with the mic arm and the fucking the mic boom and yeah you know what I mean like it's fucking I got legitimate fucking you know uh, uh, cinema lights but it's just like I think I have to go with like a soft box because I need I, because the way my chair sits in the wall like I still want the wall to yeah be, you weren't lit up very well no I know and it's like I'm I'm struggling with it you man. one of those that's it I, but I don't know I don't know if did you hang what I said it was right above the like right above the camera like right in front of me and. So if you're sitting here, you're facing me, and, and say I'm the camera, right? Yes. I'm the okay. camera shooting at you right, right now. Yes. Camera, sh- say this is your camera, right? Shooting at you. Yes. This light ball is to the right of you. It's lighting up half your face. It goes right down your nose. So there's a shadow that goes right down the center of your face. Mm-hmm. That's what you want. Okay. It gives you more like depth. Right. Yeah. 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 I learned about that. Yeah. 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 But one guy told me to put. And uh, you already have the light on the back wall, so you have a backlight. Yeah, I have two lights, so I have one here, and they're you know they're adjustable. They're the. I don't remember. And it's a soft light too. So you want, you want soft light like that. Yeah. And then you, you don't want to be directly. I mean, I can adjust the softness of my lights. Yeah. uh, Yeah. Yeah. You gotta fuck around with it. I know, man. Like I said, I'm, I I just, I wish I had more time because I got a tattoo and then like, yeah, it's like, I've been thinking about just quitting tattooing to be completely honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Cause I want to do YouTube, man. Like I want to make videos, dude. Like I want to make, I want to, I want to do content. Like I I don't give a fuck about anything else. Everything else, like the the passion that I had when I first started tattooing and like made it my life. That's how I kind of feel now about like creating content for YouTube and like doing podcasts. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I enjoy it. Like I love tattoo. It's been my life for, you know, forever, but it's like. I find myself at the tattoo shop fucking just wanting to leave and go to the studio and fucking like, oh, I got an idea. And it's like, fuck, I got this idea in my head. I could record this fucking sick video right now. But I have to sit and here. What, what's the, what kind of ideas for videos you have? You, you have like just ideas pop up in your head and you just want to yeah. talk about it? Yeah. Just like talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just like societal shit, like, you know, issues going on in my own life, like positivity shit, like how to be successful, you know, like how to fucking, you know, be set goals and how important goal setting is in life and, you know, break that down and fucking, mm. yeah. And everything comes from my perspective, from my unique perspective, from my mm. brain. Because we're all different. We're all different fucking humans. We all have different thoughts and... And it's like this whole, you know, wave of fucking, of just being able to watch another human being and, and get their perspective on, on a different angle. And you're like, it's, you know, something you don't even think about, mm. you know? And I think that's just what I, what I do for people because you should, I don't, I don't know if these people were weirdos. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but I would like to think not. I would like to think that all my, most of my subscribers are level headed, you know, regular functioning adults in mm. society. And these people tell me that I have a, I affect their lives. You know what I mean? Like, I, I helped one dude fucking, you know, get off drugs. Literally. Well, that he says. I don't know. He could be, the whole thing could be fucking bullshit. But apparently I helped him fucking, my videos, like the ones I made about, like, I made a video about, like, substance abuse and about, like, you know, like being addicted to shit and, like, you know, the, the mental process that I feel like you have to go through to, to get rid of the fucking addictions and, you know, all that shit. And he's like, dude... I, you know, I've been clean for X amount of days or whatever. And then, you know, I got other people that are like, listen, I wait for your videos. I have reminders set. So like, you know, I got one dude in Maryland, uh, he said he's got the whole DMV fucking rocking with me. Mm-hmm. He watched, he works at the DMV and he's fucking got everybody at the DMV fucking why I subscribed to my fucking channel watching my videos and shit. That's fucking awesome. So like, dude, this shit's going crazy. It's going, I got people from Australia. I got people from the, uh, from fucking, um, um, not Ireland, but Scotland. Reaching out and just hitting me up on Instagram and saying, yo, mate, you know, we fucking down under fucking, uh, yeah. Scotland. Oh, yeah. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Oh, yeah. I, listen, I can show you. Hey, I can show I you. I think they talk like that in Scotland. 
So I could show you all the details. I really wish you had that shit. kid who was talking shit to you. I really wish you had his recording know, saved on there. I, I know. know you fucking do. You can <clears> no, 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 no. It was, it's you on can a different. Dig that shit up. It's on a different app on a different device. Oh, okay. Yeah. So even if I log into that app on this device, mm. it won't be there. It won't be in the fucking. Yeah. But yeah, you know. So put your energy towards something positive. Yeah. It's not doing. towards not towards fucking. Ah, uh, you know what? It got to me that day for some whatever reason. It no, just I'm got talking to, me. to that kid, not you. Oh. Put your energy. Look at like look what you're doing. You're putting all this energy. And you're obsessed with the cameras. You're obsessed with the getting everything right and yeah. getting the lighting right and, yeah, yeah, and talking yeah. about it, and wanting to do it. And there's some people out there who just they want to put all their energy towards some fuck shit like that. Yeah, I mean, just to make like what is the payoff to try to be like you know what fuck you you gotta tell me how to do this or because you whatever like it's wild man like people are just fucking some people in this world are just burnt. Yeah, you know, or and Burnt then some toast. are just kids. You know, they just yeah. they just don't haven't you know experience. They don't have enough life experience to understand that you don't speak to people that way. And there's a yeah. certain yeah. way that you go about getting what you want. Yeah, you know, no consequences. To yeah, it anymore. yeah, yeah. So you know, they just don't they just don't learn these lessons. You know, so that's why, unfortunately, there's people like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. That's why parenting is really important. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do it right. Yep. Well. This was a great podcast, bro. I agree. Thanks yeah, for man. coming down and doing Thank it. You. No, man. Anytime, I'll fucking come down here. You know, whenever you want me here, dude, just let me know. I'll come and do this. Well, hopefully, we, hopefully, you can move here. Maybe you're gonna move to uh, Texas like everybody else. Uh, I don't know, man. Florida's just as good, if not better. I think Florida's better <clears> than Texas. I've never really oh, hung man. out in Texas. I'm a Florida cracker, man. Through yeah. and through, I yeah, grew yeah. up here. I when you know my whole, I've spent my whole life here. So, you know, I don't, I don't mind coming back. I leave all the time for, you know, a little bit, but I yeah. always fucking end up back here eventually. So Yeah. Yeah. Cool, man. Cool, well, man. Well, tell everyone listening uh, where to follow all your shit and subscribe and everything. Hell yeah. Um, fuck with me on Instagram, uh, Slum by Nature. Uh, you know, I got, um, fuck me on Patreon, uh, Boziac Conundrum. Uh, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Boziac Conundrum, and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to be putting out tons of content coming up pretty soon. Uh, i got a lot of time coming up on my hands to go ahead and just kind of film what I want to film. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of behind-the-scenes uh, shit as well for my Patreon um, only, so I'm going to have like a secondary set of cameras filming uh, my podcast while I'm filming a podcast along with you know some, some few other little tidbits here and there. So that's going to be available to all my Patreon subscribers. Um, you know, and anybody that's you know rocking with me from the first fucking Concrete Podcast – I really appreciate it because, uh, you know, this, this, all this shit has changed my life. And, uh, yeah. So thanks Hell for yeah. fucking with me. Awesome. Hell yeah, man. That's awesome. What about the OnlyFans? The OnlyFans? No, or no? Uh, or you no. know, I, I haven't really figured out what kind of content I'm going to do for my OnlyFans. So I'm okay. not really promoting the OnlyFans right now because people have been subscribing and I haven't been doing anything and they've been getting pissed. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? You know what I mean? So it's just like, I, you know, until I figure out what I want to do with yeah. that, then I'm just going to, you know, I'm not really going to promote that. <laughs> yeah, <anymore>. For sure. <laughs> you know? Cool, bro. Well, thanks for being here, man. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah thanks, thank man. you, brother. All right. That's all, folks. <laughs>